what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We you at, Steve Kim? We got Trent in the cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? In the gym, shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that that are like-minded and and just are real and genuine better stay in your lane hop, hop is you, you are fucking insane you dude what you just will not give this guy his power what is up what is wrong with you oh you must have thought i was a bitch i am him use not it what's the topic with your logic when i probe komodo i was talking got to get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and back it. Smitty and Jason Brown, kill the yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said, that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? My opinion offended you? You should hear what I keep to myself. <laughs> we are fully loaded today. It is Merciless Monday, and it is a loaded lineup. Big Matt McChesney, Scarlett Johnson, a grassroots activist. Talk about the boys and the girls playing again with each other. It's kind of like the birds and the bees. Which one has the stinger? Which one don't? We're going to dive into that with Scarlett Johnson. Don't miss it. It's going to be loaded. E-Dub, Eric Weddle joining us this morning. Talk about the NFL Combine. And Jeff Nadu joins us as well. We're going to talk all things NCAA March Madness. Our top five, top of the world, bottom of the barrel, movies. Don't miss that one. We're going to dive into that as well. We got a loaded one today. RIP, rest in peace to one of ESPN's greatest, Chris Mortensen. Uh, Sean Salisbury and I are starting to do a show tomorrow and we're going to break down the Super Bowl down and distance between the Chiefs and the 49ers. We're going to dive into it and do a live show tomorrow and then we're going to do everything else on Patreon. But Sean and Chris Mortensen were really good close friends, by the way. Uh, Sean's going to his funeral and uh, it was a uh, it was a sad day for a lot of cats that I know who knew Chris. I did not know Chris, um, but they knew him and uh Said he was a great dude. That's when ESPN was great. Uh, that's when those type of guys were on there. Clayton, Sean, Salisbury, um, you know, Stuart Scott. All the legends are gone, man. It's unbelievable, unfortunate. Um, but we're going to have a uh, bottom of the barrel, top of the world discussion today. We got a loaded one, man. Pound that like, subscribe, become a member today. If you're not a member, we need more members. Cambray, Cambray Rose, whatever your name is, became a member. Shout out to him. But first, LeBron, Caitlin Clark, are they the official goats in their profession? We're going to dive into that this morning. LeBron scores 40,000 points, the first person ever to reach this feat, of course. Already the leading scorer of all time, but loses once again on a record-breaking night. Is this a telltale sign who LeBron James really is? All wrapped up in a big bow and a tie. Looks pretty. I got it. This is interesting with LeBron. Um, all the LeBron lovers and, you know, dick writers all love LeBron. As he approached the all-time leading score... Um, everyone was riding his ass like, oh my goodness, he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT of all time. Once he got the leading score record, he's the GOAT of all time. See, that's what you guys have been saying. I'm going to just stay with me on this. When LeBron became the GOAT is when he broke the scoring record, correct? That's all you guys right here started saying. He's the GOAT. 
But why when Kareem held the record for fucking 30 years, none of you said he was the GOAT? <laughs> Let that sink in, dog. I'm just going to leave it at that. When Kareem had the scoring record for the last fucking however many years, why wasn't he the GOAT? But when LeBron did it, it's the GOAT. Can't wait to listen to, I can't wait to debate this with Big Smitty. Let's, set, let's get Smitty right in here, man. Dive, dive into this because my far east side, Naptown's finest, is missing out on the discussion that we should be having together. And we got a loaded lineup, and I got to get my esteemed co-host extraordinaire in here. He is uh, known as the far east side, Naptown's finest, Ball State legend, Fox Sports working, AR5 goggle wearing, Lamar Jackson defending, horrific LeBron hairline having, Naptown's 317's very own Big Smitty. Clap it up. Yeah, I'm going to need another fresh haircut, but I still look good. JB, you got straight to it, man, and I'm glad you did. I watched a video from Mr. Beast yesterday. I, I was studying all weekend. I was working. I was grinding. Mr. I was Beast. learning. Mr. Beast, he's the biggest YouTuber, I think, out right now. You know, uh, Absolute huge. nobody, and he's unbelievably huge, yep. Say that, but dude, I read up on this dude. This motherfucker was a hustler. He's a hustler, though. We can say what he want. We, we might we might like his content. We might say it's boring. He's a hustler. He I posts. dove into this too. I don't believe he is for like five to t for like ten years. Just post, 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 post. And he said it's important in your videos to get straight to it. Whatever the thumb thumbnail is, get straight to it. Soon, soon as you start, LeBron is a bitch. Like whatever it is, I'm just playing around. But <laughs> whatever it is, get straight to it. It's very important. You know. Well, let's get right to it. I I, I also think that. Mr. Beast has the Illuminati or some shit behind his ass because that, that shit just blew up. Bloop. This he a hustler. He, a hustler. he scored 40,000 points last night. LeBron did. Before we get to the quote of the day, we got a loaded lineup. We got a lot of people in here today. 40,000 points. I hear all these Bron dick riders talking about he's the GOAT when he became the scoring record. I've never seen anyone talk about Kareem being the GOAT for 35 years as he was the scoring record holder for 30-plus years or however long he was. And Kareem... By far, if you look at all statistics, uh, dominates LeBron in every single fucking category. And when LeBron broke the scoring record, Kareem is like, just never thought of again. Like, and nobody ever mentioned Kareem when he held this record. And it's crazy how people, to you and I, Smitty and I got into an argument yesterday about Caitlin Clark, which we're going to dive into. But, like, it's only recency bias that we always have a, uh, uh, a debate about. We debate about recency bias. This is how good LeBron is right now. You guys never saw Kareem. Like, the people that say this never saw him. And I haven't heard anyone talk about LeBron or Kareem holding the record for so long. Why was he never mentioned as the GOAT, Smitty? He never lost in the finals. He never lost in college. He never lost in high school. He's an MVP of several MVPs. NBA Finals MVPs, he developed the most unstoppable shot on record today. He holds it. He holds it. There's a reason why LeBron did a sky hook to pay him homage. There's, I, don't, I don't see no one trying to do a fucking LeBron shot. So I'm trying to make sure we're, we're clear here. But let me dive into a little deeper. I got to ask you, if MJ had played 21 years, what would his point total be? <laughs> he played 15, Smitty. I'm trying to figure out. LeBron has been to several finals and clearly was not the best player on the floor. Not even his own team was he the best on his own team. He was third in scoring twice in finals on his own team. Wade and Bosch led the, the, the team twice. He averaged 17 a game versus the, versus the Spurs one series um, where they lost. He has always needed super teams every single time he's won a ring. Make no mistake about it. And he's played in what I call, Smitty disagrees, the softest era of all time. Let's make no mistake about it. He needed Ray Allen's shot versus the Spurs. They got drugged by Dallas in a series. He got drugged by Golden State several times and then needed Kyrie to finally get by Golden State by hitting a clutch three. 
He's clearly not the best dribbler. He's not the best shooter, Smitty. He's not the best defender. He's not the best free throw shooter. He's not the most clutch player I've ever seen. Yet we have the audacity to call him the GOAT. What is he truly great at? Longevity. Let's call it what it is. This is what he's great at. Longevity. Let's just keep it real. So I asked you that, Smitty, before we get into the to the quote of the day and stuff. But we got a lot to dive into. But I need your take real quick because Caitlin Clark is also on the thumbnail. And, uh, again, we have that debate. These two are the GOATs already being discussed across mainstream media today. I mean, listen, I do agree with you that LeBron James is the GOAT of longevity. I do agree with you on that. We are on the same page there that we have not seen somebody be this great for this long and be this overall healthy for this long. So kudos to him, his regimen, take care of his body at a very high level. But just because you've been really, really good to great for a very long time does not mean you're still greater than the previous greats. And I, and yeah, I mean, you mentioned Kareem, you know, um, obviously Jordan, Kobe, Magic. There's a lot of other names that are, are in the conversation. My thing is this. LeBron James is definitely in the conversation to be the greatest player of all time. But to me, be- becoming the all-time scoring leader shouldn't have been the 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 knock that that put him there. If you had him there, it's because of of the, the rings or the eye test or the overall stats prior. It's like like to me, at that point in, in his career, that shouldn't have been the thing that that told you as a fan. You know what? All right, yeah, LeBron's now 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 he's the goat. He's the best now. Like, nah, like, because we got to understand context matters. A guy like Kobe Bean Bryant wasn't handed the keys when he first got into the league. He had to play a supporting and a backup role for a long time, which obviously will diminish your stats. Michael Jordan, I think, broke his leg, right, like in year two. Then he retired for two years and he came back. Like, th- there are certain things that just matter that goes into it. And you mentioned, you said Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but he's been holding the all-time score record for so long, and we've never said that he was the GOAT. So why are we automatically just saying LeBron is? is the goal. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, again, I don't think that record should have been the, the thing that put him there. But, again, he does have a lot of other numbers and stats that he could argue why he is there. You mentioned the NBA Finals. I'm looking at his, his finals averages. His first two years that he went were like, ah, you know, 06, 07, he was at 22 points per game. Then uh, that that first year, I think, with Miami against the Mavs, like you said, it was 17.8. It was the biggest probably uh, uh, drop he, or, or knock, I'll say, in his career was at 17.8 points per game uh, finals. But after that, he started balling, 28, 25, 28, 35, 29, 33, 34, 29. So the last like seven Look finals, he's been they balling lost. out. Those averages, they lost two of those series. <laughs> he did. No, you're right. No, for sure. You you are right. It, it and, happens. And People, statistics are definitely misleading. And you believe stats and numbers don't lie. I do. I believe they do lie. I do believe they lie because if you don't, if you know anything about stats and how games flow, if I'm getting blown out and drug every single game, we don't care about you. If you watch the Lakers who got dominated by the Detroit Pistons with in that in that year with Shaq and, yeah. and Carl Malone was hurt and Gary Payton was hurt and all that. Kobe went off for 40 a game. Shaq had 40 a game. They got blown out every game. They got blown out every game because they let they already knew this the the how they were handling this team and how they were going to st- structure it with no Carl Malone, no Gary Payton. They were hurt. They had no Artest or they had no uh, Bynum was young and was hurt actually, so they had none of that. And they let those two eat. Go ahead, we'll shut down all your scrubs because you have no Carl Malone, Gary Payton. Everybody's hurt, and we'll dominate the game. And that's what they did. People can let people score and have crazy numbers in certain games and dominate the game. I don't see greatness in that. I see letting you eat because we know how we're going to win this game. True greatness means I'm going to figure it out to win the game. I'm going to control the narrative. I might not need 50 points, but maybe I'll have 20 assists, 20 rebounds. I don't know. But LeBron's stats, just like Caitlin Clark's, they can be lies. They can deceive you. They can deceive you. I've seen stats deceive us, Smitty, and, and you have too in football. I see guys throw for 30 times in the fourth quarter because they're down by 40. And then he no. throws for 600 yards, and we're like, oh, shit, he threw for 600 yards. They got beat by 40. That's yeah. why they threw for 600 yards. <laughs> like, yeah. he threw the ball 30 times in the fourth quarter. So I've seen numbers lie. Um, so I'm not a true believer in all these stat numbers and all that shit that they, they, they don't lie 
I, I mean, numbers that. don't tell the full story. I agree with you. I've always said that, but it does tell part of the story. You know what I'm saying? Like when you look at someone and you're ranking them, whether it's in the current day or in all time greatness, stats is a part of what you look at for sure. But it shouldn't be the only thing you look at, you know, because like you say, I mean, I always use the example and I've been a Russell Westbrook fr- a fan, but the years when he was averaging, you know, full blown triple doubles, no one was saying he was the best player in the world. You know what I'm saying? And he's averaging a down triple double. So, like, you know, your stats don't tell the full story, but it it does tell a story. You know, it's a count for me, it's a combination of stats, rings, uh, moments, big time shot, clutch factor, skill set, the eye test, etc. Um, but like I said, I mean, but you keep missing Caitlin Clark, so I feel like you want to slightly move into that because she just made history this weekend, and I think. First of all, before we even argue and dive into who she is and the greatness, I got to give her a round of applause because she just broke a 54-year record. 54-year record. Think about all the past greats that have played the game, both, both men and women. We've seen them all. We've seen Jordan, Kareem, Magic. I'm talking about on the women's side. We see Maya Moore. We see Candace Parker, Lisa Leslie. We, we've seen so many greats on both sides. None of them have ha, has done what Kayla Clark just did. So before we even dive into anything, that's a historic feat that may not ever get broken. Let me so, let me let me break down your stats. Mean something point. Um, this is. is why they don't mean shit to me, and this is why Caitlin Clark to me is the most overhyped, discussed basketball player in the recent history um she broke a guy's record correct named pete maravich right pete do you know when he played three-point shots did not exist yeah all right i just want to make clear here just like will chamberlain there were no three-point shots so just do the math and if you ever sat there and took away the three-point shot she'd be thousands behind (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe so, but if there was no three point shot to this game, her game wouldn't be the same. So it's kind of hard to really compare. He but didn't shoot three this. because there was no three, so he was getting to the paint. If there was no three for her, uh, she would fucking adjust her games to get to the paint. Just like everybody back in the days when it when it was Shaq and Tim see, Duncan see. and Darren Robinson and Patrick Ewing and these guys, we played the game through our big man because that's how the game was played. This now they do shoot three. So I I can't make that comparison. All I know is a lot of women and men played with a three-point line after Pistol Pete Maravich, correct? And none of them did what Kayla Clark did. So I mean, before you try to water down what she did. What about every other great that also played after Pistol Pete Maravich, who also had a three-point line, who did not score as many points? Go ahead. Okay, so first of all, you talk about this girl being the greatest, and I compared her to a you bunch of that. people on on my on a couple rants, and I discussed the people that she is supposedly greater than: Cheryl Miller, Lisa Leslie, Lobos of the world, all those people. To your point. If there was no three-point shot, Smitty, how the fuck is Caitlin Clark getting into the paint against them? That's what I mean. Maravich went into the paint versus who? Look at the treetops towers that he had to go to the paint against. You're telling me that Caitlin Clark could have got to the paint and to the rack on Candace fucking Parker? Get out of here with that shit. I'm so tired of hearing about this girl. She's a fucking mid at best in the middle of Podunk, Iowa. She's the only fucking player on her shitty team, and everything goes through her. She touches the ball 60 times a game, and you're acting like she's the greatest shit since sliced bread. She's mid as shit. I would have loved to see her against Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Miller and Candace Parker and fucking Lobo, and I can name it Sue Bird. I Why are you putting a guard it? against Biggs? That would make sense. That's like, no, that's like saying I would have loved to see Isaiah Thomas Go get Shaquille O'Neal and so that would make no, sense. But you're like, you're you're was fucking six fucking shot. five against no, no, against no, no, no. a guard. Come on, he man, make it make just sense. Said she would adjust her game if there she was no just her game, just like a fuck. She yes. would have went inside. She would have no, no she choice. Went inside on Lisa Leslie, homie. No, she wouldn't have. So guards can't get to the paint did. because of the size difference. Yeah, we didn't so see Tony did. Parker get to the paint a high clip. We didn't see AI get to the paint a high clip. We didn't see Isaiah just because yeah, you're a guard, you can't get to the paint shot. and drive and finish. Man, stop. There was a three point I'm shot. I'm not with all the hypotheticals, JB. I'm not you with the what it would have. What happened? 
That's like saying if it weren't a three point line, Steph Curry wouldn't be Steph Curry. Well, well shit, JB, it is a three point line. So I don't understand that. Like, that doesn't make sense. Why, why are you talking yeah, about here, here, here's here's what I don't get? I don't get that you. You can dismiss everything that I brought up, but then I got to dismiss everything you said. <laughs> like, you I can't I have to right. accept. I got to accept your terms, but when it comes to my terms and there was no three-point shot, you just could dismiss that. Oh, no, well, she would have adapted. No, she wouldn't have. So the fact of the matter is she broke a guy's record who did not have three points shot. We're like, not saying she's better than Pistol Pete Maravich, though. We're not, we're not saying no. that. We're saying that she broke a 54-year record. And no. Tell me, tell me, time out. Did the three-point line just get made this fucking these last three years? No. Killer Carr was in the devil. Was no. It, was it it. no, it's been there for a long time, right? When Maya Moore was playing, all these motherfuckers could have shot the three. They all could have shot the same three that she shoot, but they couldn't. They either couldn't, they shouldn't, they did it. Whatever word you want to use, it did not happen. Caitlin Clark figured it out, and you're gonna diss her because she's realizing the fuck. What, what did she mean? figure out? I'm tired of the new booty ass cats like yourself I mean, who I have not it. ever seen anybody prior to fucking the year 2000 call these people the goat. That's I didn't say she's number it. one, but she's in a conversation. To she needs a ring. Research. I want you to go watch some film and do some real research and investigative journalism and tell me that she's better than all those curls I just mentioned. That's I what didn't I say. I never do said. Do, do, do I, I got to pull the text? Up. Up. I, I didn't say she's better than Cheryl Miller. I didn't say she's better than Cheryl Sloops. I didn't say she's better than Lisa Leslie. I didn't say she's better than Brittany. She's in the conversation. She's in that room. They they all in the room chilling. They all in the room. She's in the room because your motherfucking ass don't do no research on me. Because you a hater. You don't respect anybody from today's generation. Anybody past fucking the 94 you think is me and an ass. I don't respect her. You know why? Because why? you don't know what the fuck happened before her. Man, you That's a liar. You, you ain't seen the video of her. Research. She met Maya Moore the other day and damn near passed out because she was so excited and happy. Stop it. If all your cronies and yourself would go do the actual research and then come back and tell me why I'm wrong, I would res- I would start to respect your motherfucking asses. But no, since you don't and all you go off is the social motherfucking media, then you have no earned respect. You don't earn respect. Earn respect. Respect earn is respect given, homie. Your ass don't understand that shit. Y'all think everything before 2000 was du- was garbage. And you think everybody after 2000 is garbage. So we on the same, we're doing the same thing in different ways. You no, think everybody not. after 2000 is garbage. No, How about you do your research today? Do your no, research today. Just because you're alive today don't mean you're using your eyes today. Just because you're alive today don't mean you're using your eyes and your research today. You ain't watched no full fucking game of Caitlin Clark and you calling her me it. She's playing for Iowa. You said you exactly. fucked up, JB. I called exactly. you. I got you on a fishing hook right now. You said she's playing for butt fuck Iowa, and there's nobody on her team. You said she gets the ball every play. You said her team is ass. She's the only one there. Okay, boom. Let let's stay right there. So she's the only good player on her team, and her team is ranked top five. Just beat the number two team in the country in Ohio State Sunday. And she has, has them contending for a fucking national title. And she's the only good player on the team. Make that make sense. How am I mid and you put me on a shitty ass team with no fucking help, with no real athletes, and I'm the sole reason why we're top five in the nation. She make it make sense, it all, JB. Right? She better win it all, right? She better win it all and take them to the finals and win it all like the Cheryl Millers and the Lisa Leslie's and all the greats, the Candace Parker. She better do that shit, right? You can't compare it. Candace Parker was at Tennessee with dogs. Candace Parker was at Tennessee with dogs. Come on, JB. She better do. All I'm asking is a question. She better do what they did if she's so fucking good, though, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? No, because the timeout. Those teams that Lisa Leslie and Candace Parker and them girls played on was not shitty ass teams. Candace Parker, JB, listen. Candace Parker with the Tennessee, bro. Come on, man. So she don't get she gets a pass now. She she don't win it. So I just asked you a valid question and you said no. So no, I'm, no, no, I'm 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 gonna flip back to you. If she takes Iowa to the final four and loses, what lose? You she can't lose in your mind. If she takes, if she loses first round, yes, it's a fucking knock. She lose, if she lose second round, yes. If she I takes Iowa to the final four, listen, she takes Iowa to the final four and loses. I'm not gonna be like, oh, so failure of a season. Like, what? It's Iowa. That's like taking the fucking who's shitty right now. 
I'm trying to think of a shitty crib matter, on top of it. That's like taking the fucking Pistons right now today. Shitty. Like the Pistons today to the fucking championship. It don't matter. Like, they're all shitty. Um, we got to get to the quote of the day before we got our first guest on. We'll get back into Caitlin Clark. We have to. Um, I'll go down as a hater all day long, D. Jones. Fucking kidding me? Um, quote of the day brought to you by betonline.ag. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. What up, what up, what up, man? The Real Coach AB here for the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course, for the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadeau as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Peace. By the way, JB, uh, somebody sent us $100 today. I don't know if you gave him a shout out. We got to shout that brother out. What's up? Real quick, somebody sent us $100 today to start the show. I don't know if you caught that, but you got to give him a shout out for doing that. Uh, That's big time. Is it Euro, though? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to do a deep dive. Hey, $100, $100. Quarter quarter of the day. It might be $2. Quarter of the day. Uh, there is a price to pay for speaking the truth, Smitty, and there's a bigger price for living a lie. Mm. Um, I truly believe that. That's why I always tell the truth. I don't need to fucking remember shit if I have to fucking tell you the truth. If I lie, I got to remember everything I just told Smitty about Caitlin Clark being shitty and all this old shit. So I got to make sure I always tell the truth. Contrary to belief, brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over to Prize Picks and tell them that we sent you. A fake person will make a promise they can't keep. A real person will keep the promise they made. Um, contrary to belief. Like Smitty, we got a top of the world, bottom of the barrel discussion today. And we're going to do our top five movies. Ooh. And we're going to do our top five or bottom five movies of all time as well. So the poll question is a perfect segue. A movie you found so disturbing you never want to watch it again. Drop your comments in the section below. Um, If you haven't, drop that. What movie do you find so disturbing that you never want to watch it again? The the Joker, the 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 new Joker, like the the latest Joker was kind of why it was good though. Like I liked it. It just was kind of like it was dark, man. Like did you see it? I saw it. It was just kind of dark. He was psycho. You know the scene he did. He on the nose. He shot buddy in the head. Brains blew out. He just was like, it's a good movie. I don't need to see it again though. I would have see. I would have choked the shit out of that Joker. I wouldn't have played with him on the bus. Like I already know, I got. I'm a. I'm a judge of character. I'm already on top of that type of shit. I, I'm gonna choke the shit out of that dude right, right from the gate on the bus. Right off the bat, right, as soon as you see him, he was just laughing and shit by himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I would have busted his ass right out the gate. Right out the gate. Hey, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it, he show he damn sure couldn't could have been in the hood though. Like if they did that same movie, but in the hood, we would they would have showed like. Chin chat them. Hey, hey, what you got going over here, partner? They would have checked him and everything. Like, grab him, the up, him, them up, and everything. <laughs> Only, by the way, my my main man, Mo Martin, was a fullback of mine in college. Uh, athletic fullback, big stocky cat. Back when fullbacks existed, he played a little tight end too oh, in the slot. He could catch the rock. Uh, he he'll tell. He's telling Big Smitty what the deal is. Uh, oh, ran him over. Without further ado, though, we have a grassroots activist. I appreciate coming on the show. She's going to break down a lot of things, and uh, it's going to be a great conversation. Um, and I wanted to—I want to welcome our great guest right out the gate on this merciless Monday. We're going to take no mercy with our main, fine, beautiful female, Scarlett Johnson. Welcome in, Scarlett. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? I appreciate you joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely. 
I, I got to ask you right out the gate. Uh, yesterday, we saw some disturbing uh, – I saw a disturbing take on some gentlemen. Um, wh- what's going on? They're wearing red heels, Scarlett. Red heels, <laughs> men. Men. I'm going to start – we're going to start doing a little sec- – we're going to just do a segment, Scarlett, and I'm going to start uh, – I think I'm going to call it sliding into JV's DMs. <laughs> And I'm going to talk about all the women who hit me up yesterday asking me, where did the real men go? Mm. That's that's a question that a lot of women are asking. Um, I am thankful that I'm married to a real man. Uh, you know, I have a mother of five kids and I've raised uh, a good man who he's in medical school right now. And. I did that because I was raised by a good man. My dad uh, was a U.S. Marine. Um, He re-enlisted after 9-11, did two tours in Iraq, uh, one in Afghanistan. So I've been blessed to be always surrounded by strong men. And I think, and a lot of the moms that I work with at Moms for Liberty, also we, that's a thing we have in common. We had really good dads who were a predominant force in our life. And frankly, my dad looks around what's going on right now. And he's just shaking his head all the time. He's just like, this is crazy. And sometimes just, just for, just for, um, you know, what they say for get, you know, giggles. I asked my dad. Shits and giggles. giggles. You can cuss on here. (laughs) Say that. Okay. Yeah. Just for shits and giggles. I'll, I'll say to my dad, like, what would you do if this was me? What would you do if a, when I was 14, Um, Like an example that we had in Wisconsin, in Madison, if I was after a gym class, I went in with three of my female friends and lo and behold, an 18 year old man, fully intact penis, walks in, undresses, showers right next to us, exposing his erect um, genitalia to us. What would you do? And my dad's basically like, I'd go to jail with a smile on my face like that, that. And that's. There, that kind of fear, I don't want to promote violence, but it's it's that kind of fear that people used to have, that that stuff did not happen because we didn't listen to crazy people. Um, we didn't let predators into our classroom in the name of welcoming and inclusion. And there, something has been lost. And that dads are afraid to confront this, that just shouldn't be a case. That should not be the case. Dads should not be afraid to confront this insanity. Um, they, these are their daughters. And, you know, their pronouns, if someone goes after their daughters, have to be like, uh, what the hell? Get out of my way. Like, you're going to get beat down. Like, this, we're not playing here. And I know that if I saw some of the examples that I know that you talk about, if I, if I saw a grown man with a beard, 6'1", not even trying to pretend like he's a female, okay? Like there's no bows, there's no pink nail polish, there's no, you know, he's not just like an ugly dude pretending to be a woman, just a play, just a dude that rolled, grew out his hair and said, hey, I'm a woman now, I'm going to play on the women's basketball team, you know, 6'1", 6'2", goatee, all of that. Basically, you know, walloping girls up and down the, you know, the basketball court. I would, I would, that that would stop. That would end. My daughter plays basketball. I, I'd be screaming and yelling. I'd be on, I, I would be on the court. I was, what is this madness? This has to end. Who are you? And I, I, maybe that's the Puerto Rican to me, but if you think I'm bad, you should see what my mom would do. Um, this just stuff just can't happen. We have to protect our girls. And that they may be embarrassed for a second. They may think, oh, mom, what are you doing? But these are the stories they'll tell when they grow up. These are the things that they need to know. They need to know that mom and dad are there to protect them from men walking around in red high heels um, saying, you know, hey, hey, girls, you know, let me into your bathroom now. Uh, that's not normal. And, and teaching girls to subvert their instinct, which is like, get get the hell out of here. Get out of my bathroom. Get out of my sports. Get out of my team. You can't shower with me. Telling girls, forcing them to accept this um, is, is dangerous. 
there's a reason why we have that kind of ick instinct. And then when we're teaching men to not protect women, well, you know what? Look at what we get. We get men that don't protect women. We get men that have been emasculated um, and men that, frankly, no real woman wants to marry. You just don't. I, I, I you, They just can't convince me that me, women are super happy with these soy boys. OK, they're just not. I, I, I think this is just a whole cultural phenomenon that is going to end so bad. Yeah. I got to before I know Smitty wants to dive in. I got to <clears throat> we usually we're a sports show, but we are we, we like to say we're the realest show on planet Earth. And 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 listen, I, first of all, Puerto Rican from Wisconsin. Clap it up. Um, <laughs> that's a rarity in its own right. Yeah, uh, I ain't never heard it. <laughs> secondly, I got to ask you. So, like, I'm from I'm a coach. I'm from a military dad, a, a coaching background, et cetera. Discipline, uh, hard ass, you know, all that shit. Mm-hmm. But lo- at the end of the day. We used to say coach them hard, love them harder. At the end of the yes. day, the kids knew that I cared for them at the end of the day. Like we say, allow it. You either allow it or you either coach it, coach it or allow it. I think we've allowed all this shit to unfold and happen. Yes. So, And this is a real show is why I said that. Let me ask you this, though. Like I, I get after the women. I have a 26 year old daughter now. I get after all the women out here who have allowed this type of behavior to happen on the sports in the sports world, as far as that goes, I think the women can control the narrative. Walk the hell out. Tell them I ain't playing. I know it's tough, and I know people fight me back and say, oh, well, the women shouldn't play now because they're – I said, no, I didn't say that. But eventually you have to do something drastically to make a change or to allow for a change and at least get it into court or get it in front of some people because if they don't – if they keep playing it, they're just allowing it. And – that's where I fight back. And that's why I go after the women and not, not I don't go after the women, but I'm saying women, you are the ones. Now mm-hmm. I know to say that where are the dads, where are the moms, where are the parents? And then where are the coaches who are allowing this as well? Yes. I just, I, I want to know where all that is. And, and I have to ask you this blunt question. Like do you, and I know I, I see all your posts and I know you're super authentic. I love it. Do you find an issue or do you see that there was maybe maybe the start of this all started with LGBTQ and women pushing this narrative? Do you see that as being an yes. issue? Yes, absolutely. I think that, unfortunately, you know, fem- well, first of all, Title IX was created to protect women. It was created on the basis of a binary that men and women are different in sports and that and that in order for girls to compete fairly and to have opportunities, they needed to be able to compete in female only leagues, female only teams. And so this this was created as a way, you know, early feminism to something that was actually good. But now and I've written about this, how we need to reclaim feminism because it's just gone off the rails. Um, Now, feminism is to embrace men who pretend to be women. And I think that there is just there is something interesting that happened that that feminism so, you know, emasculated men that now look at what has happened. And there's consequences from that. There are consequences from beating men down, um, from having this narrative, this war on men, this war on boys. You do that long enough, and I think you end up with some cultural rot that we have to deal with right now. Um, and that's unfortunate. That's not the fault. I, I've got a 15-year-old daughter. I've got a 22-year-old daughter. Um, I have a 17-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old daughter. So, you know, unfortunately, they're they're the victims of a lot of political gamesmanship. And woke didn't just happen two years ago. It didn't just happen four years ago. This stuff is deeply embedded into curriculum. You can you can go back to like 2011 and it's like a switch was flipped in 2016 and it really just went into overdrive. But as far as a big, bold move, you're talking something like like a Rosa Parks moment where, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore. Like like this is a civil rights cause in a way. Um, I do agree that there is something that that I think needs to be done beyond what you can't just keep going along with this. Like what happened with in Massachusetts, three girls by halftime are injured and they can't play. 
the remaining girls have to go to the coach and say, like, take us out, coach. You know, the coach didn't even independently make that call. The coach was going to let this continue. The coach was going to send those girls back in to get beat down by that guy. And the parents were in the stands watching it. The adults failed these girls. They failed these girls. And so you, you can understand that when you say, oh, the girls shouldn't just play. Yeah, you think that's really unfair that the right thing should happen. But if the adults aren't going to step up, then yeah, I guess it is a, it's on the girls to say, we're going to forfeit this game. But I think what they could have done other than just forfeit is go public. They haven't really gone public. Go public. Get in front of cameras, go on shows like yours, go get on. I, these girls could be on every major talk show, at least every conservative or reasonable one in this country and make your case and say, this isn't fair. The girls that are injured should go public. They should talk about it. The parent, Instead, you hear the parents, oh, I'm afraid. I don't want to. I don't get that. That's not my DNA. Um, and the reason why this continues to happen is because the victims aren't speaking out enough like Riley Gaines. We don't have enough of, we don't have enough Riley Gaines. We need more. We need more of these girls to speak up, to forfeit. And when they forfeit, say, do it publicly. Say why. Say, tell the truth. Stop pretending that you're okay with a biological boy changing in your locker room because I have 99% chance you are not okay with that. Parents, Stop pretending like this is okay. Like what, what's wrong with you? Why are you afraid to call out crazy people? These are crazy people. Um, yeah, I, I agree. So I, I, you mentioned Riley. I know you were on her show. I know Riley has his biggest voice. She's on OutKick and she's doing all these things. Uh, I've reached out to her as well. I know she was a competitive athlete, mm -hmm. did great in college and the SEC on all place of all of all things were maybe regarded as the greatest conference in, in, in athletics in college. And then you and then you have like the Sage Steels of the world who left ESPN for this exact reason. Um, and I spoke to her as well. Like you need those type of people to almost sacrifice their livelihoods, which a lot of people just aren't willing to do. Scarlett, you know that as well as I do. A lot of these people are scared to move out of their, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. We used to say in, in the coaching world, Sage still did it and kudos to her and shout out to her. And I've talked to her about it. Um, I just don't know how many people are willing to do it. I guess is the, if is enough people did it, it if enough people st stood up then. Uh, and what is it? Tipping point. Sometimes it's as little as 10%, maybe 20%. It, it wouldn't take much, but if you, if there was a drum beat right now, too many of the woke, too many of these DEI consultants, they're able to say, oh, it's a one in a million. Now, I've gone to testify in Madison several times. And the number one thing that I see is I'm I'm test. There aren't enough of us. And there also aren't enough athletes testifying. I, I can't it's I can't find any athletes willing to go testify and say this is what's happening. I can't find coaches that are willing to say this is what's happening. So I look there, I'm able to be painted as a crazy person. Oh, she's lying, she's gaslighting. No, I, I talked to numerous people. We know that this is happening and it's going to get worse because if you know what's happening in schools, they're recruiting, they are indoctrinating kids as early as preschool. They're having these gender sexuality alliance clubs secretly over recess in elementary schools. So with a 400, actually a 4,000% increase in kids that are identifying as non-binary and gender fluid, then this is going to increase more and more. And as bad actors, as men who absolutely could not cut it in male sports, realize, hey, I just say I'm a girl and then I can get a scholarship and I can get money and I can get awards, then they're going to do it. And also people with narcissistic personality disorders, cluster B personality, dudes with fetishes, you're going to get just just a cesspool like like a whole bunch of people that are you know that normally we would reject in society instead we celebrate them and we celebrate their mental illness we celebrate their fetish um it's i i i honestly like have we as a culture have we no shame 
have we no honor and decency? And I don't know, this is, this to me, it's just so shocking to me that this is happening to girls because until five minutes ago, I thought even the left cared about women and they cared about children. Turns out that they're willing to throw them into the volcano for the woke gods as, you know, artificial, as, as sacrificial lambs. And most feminists, okay, most feminists are cheering all the way. And that's the unfortunate truth. Most, most of the feminists on college campuses, they're either too weak to stand up or they are with their trans sisters, quote unquote. And I see women testifying um, 10 hours, 10 hours. I was at the Capitol one day testifying for the bills to protect women and girls sports. And the vast majority were tes testifying against it. And they were crazy, okay? They looked crazy. They acted crazy. They dressed crazy. It was like a clown show. It was like I was at a circus. And I'm looking around thinking, these are the people that are deciding the fate of my children? Like, hell no. These inmates are running the asylum. And, and I'm just going to keep calling it out. And I think if we keep calling it out, the more people that just call it out and say what it is, the more that this would this would go away. Um, so we just got to keep fighting. And I agree. Unfortunately, I have to, you know, I, I wish it could be different. But I know that for my own daughter, that I would absolutely support her walking off of the court. And if she doesn't walk off, I'm pulling, I'm dragging her off. Okay. I'm dragging her off the court. She is not competing against a biological male. She is not doing that. She's not doing it on principle. She's not doing it because I want to protect her. So, and I'm not participating. I will not comply with this. So, and I think if enough parents made that decision for their kids, maybe then the kids wouldn't be put in such a bad position. And we need more coaches to step up. As you know, it's hard to get people to, a lot of times these coaches aren't paid or they're not paid well. And they're good people. Like my kids have all had great coaches that make tremendous sacrifices. We need more normal, um, you, I, I think, more normal Christian, what, whatever, if religious, whatever, that you just are able to withstand this this ideology and you are tough enough. Uh, former military, you're just you're just a person that you can handle this, that if people throw that hate at you, that I don't care, I'm going to do the right thing. Um, I get death threats all the time. You know what? It's a lot. Most of this is like paper tiger stuff. I know Riley Gaines deals with it at a different level and it's tough, but she wouldn't do any, she wouldn't have it any other way. And I think you can find success and fulfillment in a whole different way. So you may lose one career, but you're going to gain another. And, you know, if maybe you're that person that's going to make that sacrifice so that a whole bunch of girls behind you do not have to deal with this and boys too, Be, you know, I'm, I'm the mother of a son and I have nephews. This is demoralizing for the boys too. Okay. This is, they do not like this. Um, and girls are going into the boys bathroom as well. Girls are going into the boys locker rooms as well. This is demoralizing for them. And I've talked to parents of like sixth grade boys that they they too will not go to the bathroom all day because a biological girl is using their bathroom and they're uncomfortable. Um, they have night tears. They're not sleeping at night. So let's not let's not rule out the detrimental effect effect this is having on boys. So and, and this is eventually going to hit men's sport. It's in some way this is going to hit men's sports. Um, and maybe it's I've I, maybe it's a way where a woman wants a biological woman wants to play in a guy's team, and that team gets an extra twenty points or something. Some sort oh, yeah. of EEI formula is created. So maybe maybe dads need to care about this now because eventually this is going to affect all all sports. The, don't think that once they conquer female sports that they're not going to go after male sports because that's what they really want, you know. They really, they really hate that football and basketball because sports is an area they have not been able to conquer yet. It's it's merit based. It is um, it's it's very masculine. They really they want to you know they want to Taylor Swift that whole thing. Um, 
So do, do not think that they're not coming for ultimately for everything. Every cultural icon needs to be ripped down in woke, for woke ideology to prevail. And it's crazy. Too. I feel like right now we're, we're living in the times now where like anything goes. There's no mm -hmm. order. Whatever thought, belief you have, imagination, whether good, bad, or ugly, or you can just do it. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, like, in their heads, like, in theory, you're like, oh, that, that sounds good. You can do whatever you want to do. Like, okay, that sounds good. But when you really sit down and think about it, there has to be order in, in every situation, whether it's a job, whether it's, like, in any level, you know what I'm saying? You can look at it in life. Yeah. Family there has to be order. Career. Um, life, etc. There has to be order. And right now we're living in a time where whatever you want to do, you can do it. If, if, if I want to wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I believe that I'm a lion. Now, now I can just start warring, you know, I get stripes and stuff all over my body and I can say I'm, I'm a lion now. And people will actually accept it because that's who I said I identify as. If you, think that's like a joke, if you think that's a joke, you're wrong. Because in schools, if you say you're a lion, that's a fursona. Um, that's a that's a gender identity. And so you could say I am a lion and that is a um, gender expression. And you can say you're a rock. There is literature on this in gender spectrum, G safe human rights campaign. They will say in DI trainings, the amount of the gender identity list is infinite. There is, there are no limiting principles. That is why in Canada, a 50 year old professor identified as a 15 year old girl and now he's able to compete with teenage girls on a swim team okay no so way. yes rebel news so a 50 year old male showers changes competes with teenage girls and he is allowed to do it and when a reporter went in to to um basically shame this guy the reporter got kicked out um the and the parents are watching this okay so this is how bad it can be. This is in Canada. This is how bad it can get. Uh, yeah, and I can see I can see what you're posting up. Um, the left doesn't care if they destroy sports. Okay, they don't care. There's nothing that you can do to. I, I almost believe that if we don't fight back hard now, there will not be female sports. There will not. That won't exist anymore. All female sports won't exist. And so we really need to fight back hard now. There, there's a story of Abraham Lincoln that when he was a country lawyer, he gave an analogy to a jury. If, uh, if I told you that a tail was now a leg, the dog's tail was a leg, how many legs would a dog have? And one juror said five. And he said, no, four, because a tail can never be a leg. You know, biological reality exists. Just because I tell you a tail's a leg, doesn't make it so. Just because I say I'm a man doesn't make it so. Just because a man would were to say I'm a woman, that doesn't make it so. Right. And you know, Chesterton fence had it's an analogy. We have we have fences up because we're keeping. Uh, you never know why. Maybe we're keeping something terrible out. Maybe we're we're locking something terrible in. But you can't just rip down these fences and not ask why, not understand why do we have these parameters? Why do we have these uh, single single sex sports? Why do we have private facilities? Um, there's, there's even studies, once Target opened up their bathrooms to, to men and basically said the bathrooms have no gender, um, voyeurism and assault went up three, three times as much and in uh, Britain, they did a study and they found out that 90% of sexual assault happened in uh, spaces that allowed for both sexes, like to change, to use bathrooms. So any facility that had both sexes, uh, sexual assaults and voyeurism and, and all sorts of inappropriate things went, happened 90% uh, of the time. So we cannot pretend that you can put men and women in the, in the same bathrooms in schools or that they can shower together and that things aren't going to happen that are that are going to be very detrimental. There's going to be rape, there's going to be assault, um, there's going to be uh, predators that realize, hey, I have easy access to my prey. And that's what gender ideology does and what they, they call it 
queer theory, queering the classroom, queering sports. Um, they, because because queering means just, I can identify as a lion, I can identify as a woman, I can identify as another species. Um, there there was recently some, some famous singer, like some, some sort of alternative singer that demanded that her bathrooms were not only um, gender neutral, they were species neutral and had litter boxes in them. So yeah, and you'll hear this in schools. I listened to a DEI training in Wisconsin where teachers were asking, are we supposed to put litter boxes in our middle school bathrooms now because we have so many kids identifying as cats and dogs and unicorns and whatnot? And the DEI trainer said, well, no, we're not gonna have litter boxes, but if they wanna wear tails and if they want to wear ears and if they meow, then you have to accommodate them. To the, I even have heard stories where school districts have hired um, in Wisconsin that they had to hire a special, um, a special needs coordinator because a a fourth or fifth grade girl thought claimed she was a cat and she would only pur purr, and so someone had to interpret her purring. Yeah, time out! It's just, you're, throwing, <laughs> you're throwing a lot at us right now, and I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to like understand. This is wow! I'm learning a lot that I did not know about. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of speaking in jet. I was kind of joking a little bit about the line no. thing, but the fact that this is really happening, Smitty, the they wear boxes, that suits. is insane. Smitty, they wear dog and cat suits into class. It, it's ba it's almost like what we're allowing kids to make the rules for the country and for the world. You know what I'm saying? Because like, as a kid, yeah, you have crazy imagination. I I thought I was a you know an NBA player. I thought I was this. I thought I was that. But now they're taking the just the the crazy, you know, imaginations that a four-year-old would have, and they're taking that and, and putting it into legislation and causing all this nonsense to happen in the world. I'm, I'm so shocked because what, what happened to common sense? Like, I don't even think we should even be arguing right now about this. Men should not be in the damn locker rooms with women. Women shouldn't be in the locker room with, with men. Point blank, period. Why are we even having? I have a little sister that's 16 years old. I'd be damn sure. I'd be damn if a if a man is in the locker room with her. Luckily, my my sister, she you know she's not a tomboy. She, a tomboy doesn't really play sports, so I don't have to deal with that. But oh man, I couldn't imagine her being on that basketball court and a a, a, a male, you know, fouls her and she's bleeding in her nose. I, I would lose my mind. I would lose my job and everything. Scarlett, Scarlett, we usually have to go to commercial break, but we're gonna run through it for you. I appreciate you coming on. I gotta add, to Smitty's point. Like I'm turning Smitty. Smitty's young. I'm turning his ass. He's gonna get. He's gonna. He's gonna take the other. Pill. I've been on your side on this one, JB. We've been on the same. Side. I know. But what? But my point to Smitty's take is, I've been telling me and Smitty and I argue all the time about player empowerment, and I say there's a bigger thing to this, and mm. this is it. We're allowing player empowerment to start at eight years old and telling the kids you can wear a cat suit to class and it's okay and you're a cat. Like that is what's starting to transcend upwards into high school. That's why the kids transfer four times in four years. College, they want more money. They want to do less and earn more. Player yes. empowerment is starting in society. That's why Smitty and I argue about this all the time. I think it's a societal issue that starts at home that's being totally ignored. And I'll end it with this, and, and I'll let you end the show for us or your segment. Um, you, no offense, I hope you don't take it, have bigger and more balls than the man out here, and that's the problem. You, uh, Riley Gaines, Sage Steele, have bigger balls than the men, and that is where we face a huge problem. And Title IX, who I, you know, I had to deal with in athletics, 50 years ago, it's basically been abolished now. And it's going to go yes. away, too, when we started to pay players. Pay for play now is going to get rid of Title IX because the Title IX women's sports cannot compete resourceful-wise, yes. resource-wise, and Title IX was officially cre created for this one reason, money. And yes. people don't understand that for every single dollar you spend on the men's side of sports and athletics, you have to spend on the woman's side. That is, by definition, the, the original agreement on, in, the, in the literature what Title IX was. And people dismiss that being the fact. 
Well, guess what? When you start to get rid of women's soccer because you don't want to pay them dollar per dollar, this is how you eliminate sports. They started doing it women's softball, women's soccer. So then guess what they'd get rid of on the men's side? Fucking badminton or some bullshit sport that you don't you just took account for the dollar per dollar deal. So people didn't see that and will never understand it. Now it's starting to hit you in the mouth. And that's just what I wanted to give everybody out here some free game. But but please, yeah, that's I, an interesting point that you're saying. Like, because I, I wasn't aware of that, and now that kind of clicks. That makes some sense to me. Because um, I always think that while there are the true believers, they're the real crazy people. And I, believe me, I've seen them in action. It's hard for me to think how, that they have so much power. But perhaps that there there there's always a a financial incentive and maybe there is some kind of financial incentive like let's just let's just beat these girls down till they quit you know till they just fold up and no one wants to play female sports anymore i i, I think scripts just did an article a few months ago bemoaning the fact that 40 there's been a 40 percent drop in females participating in sports and then they try and come up with all the reasons why and while alluding the most obvious that what's the change what's happening allowing males to play and the uh, the way that that they're structuring even uh, gym classes where if they're co-ed co-ed gym classes doesn't work it, you know what it demoralizes girls um they then they get more concerned about the boys that are there um they're not focused the boys may be more concerned about the girls it is it's a recipe for disaster for women's sports and this fruit is they've they've now this fruit is coming forward, you know, and it's not good. And, you know, you know, I just wanted to end something that I just recently exposed in Wisconsin. I found a training where over 20 teachers were meeting over Zoom to discuss how to um, install gender sexuality alliance clubs in elementary schools without parents finding out and doing this over recess. Okay. So in secret, these are kids, they were starting in fourth and fifth grade. That's kids eight to 10 years old. So they start off with one or two kids and they recruit a bunch of other kids. So this, this is what's happening in schools right now. And they're getting them early. They're indoctrinating them with this ideology. And then you wonder why, when you say, where are the dads? Why aren't people standing up? Well, they've started to indoctrinate them much younger and these kids go home and they school their parents. OK, this is very red guard, very Maoist. They'll come home and tell their parents what's what. And the teacher said, which I found interesting, one teacher said, I got permission from the students to send a letter home to their parents. I first sought the kids permission to let the parents know what was happening. So you see the whole the whole mindset is that the kids the kids are the ones in charge. It's very Marxian, it's very Paulo Freire. There's a whole like uh, a whole backstory to this. But I think feminism, the uh I think radical feminism has emasculated men and I think that a lot of wives have hold maybe hold the dads back and I think let them go let them protect your kids we need to see more dads in school board meetings we need to see more dads on the court saying hell no this isn't going to happen it's still more rare okay i think that a lot of people can fool themselves and think this isn't going to happen to me i'm not going to see this please dispel yourself of disabuse yourself of that notion you're going to see it okay you're going to see it if you have young kids right now your child is going to be competing. Your daughter is going to be competing against a biological boy. And you're going to have to decide what kind of person you are. Are you brave or are, are you a coward? Because a coward would let their little girl get beat up by a boy while people are cheering. That, that I can't think of anything more cowardly than that. And um, if my husband doesn't run on the court, I would be, I, I know my husband would, okay? I know he would, he'd be right there next to me because that's the kind of man I married and I wouldn't marry somebody who wouldn't stand up for my daughters. And I think let's raise boys to stand up for girls. Let's encourage our men to stand up for girls and let's encourage our girls to stand up for themselves.
Right. Agree. I pre Scarlett, I can't thank you enough for coming on. We like to do this uh, and change up our, our, our show here and there. And it was no better person to find than you. And I appreciate it. We'll have to do it again soon. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing out there. And um, tell Riley we want to get her on the show. Sure. I see her today. I'm actually going to see her today. She's in Wisconsin. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, again, I thank you so much, Scarlett. Thank you. Let's stay in touch. You. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate right. you. Have a good one. Scarlett Johnson, uh, everybody, um, clap it up. Um, Smitty, we, do, Smitty we, uh, we do different shit, though. We got to do stuff that uh, changes it up. We, we're the realest show. We do other shit. It's not just sports. Football just ended. We're doing other things. So We're versatile. Uh, guy. We're versatile. Like we do it. We, we pass, shoot, you know, pull from three, step back, lock down your best player. We do it all. And look, sometimes you got to have uncomfortable conversations. We got some, you know, weirdos in the chat. Hey, we got Matt. Let's do Matt right now, and we'll take a commercial after since we got some time in between Matt and our next guest. We got Big Matt on here right now, man. Big Matt Machesi, the superstar, man, interviewing Coach Prime. 30,000 plus views, subscribers didn't win up. He didn't got the look, he got the brand new shirt. Matt, look, don't switch up on us, Matt. You blowing up, man. Your show them was blowing up. Everything, blow your business is blowing up. Your money's coming in even faster. Don't change up on us. Don't forget about me. It's been like this since day one, homie. Ain't nothing changed. Hey, I thought you said that shirt said, I'm a dude, man. Like, that would have been better. I'm the dude. Man. I would have said I'm I'm gonna get a shirt that says I'm a dude man. I don't think I'm gonna get that shirt. On that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get that shirt. Uh we just had, I don't know if you got to hear some of that conversation. We just had uh Scarlett Johnson on, um, a grassroots activist. Uh she's on a show with Riley Gaines today, who's uh they're just kind of tired of the uh the whole women and men sports thing. Smitty, I had to, that's why I had to ask her, Smitty, like. I blame women a lot of this for a lot of this, though, dog. I, I just be honest, I, like it's hard to blame anyone, but I blame the women who started this movement, Matt, years ago when they pushed LGBTQ, when they pushed all these things, because they now are leaning on the men to fix it. Again, once again, you got to change the brakes of the oil. Guess who they call? That is the same issue we we see, and that's why a lot of people don't. That's why I had to ask her, Smitty, and I. And you know what? She agreed with us. Yep. She agreed and said, "Yeah, we when we started pushing LGBTQ and all these other th girls move me too and all that. Guess what it did? It allowed dicks to be whipped out in women's bathrooms, homie." And look, man, everybody knows how I feel about this. I do not think that biological men should be competing with biological women. On the same plane. It's real, it's real simple. It's not. I don't see how this is a like a massive point of contention anymore. I don't understand how people can still like fight it. Like, bro, dude. I, I mean, I, I just can't imagine being a man in that situation. And like, I, okay, I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing right guard, and she wants to play football, and we're gonna put her at outside linebacker, and I get to pull and run 10 yards straight at you at 340 angry. Bro, that's – I don't even feel right talking about it. And we're that's talking like, about, like, high school and up. Like, I, I, I've always shared the story. I, when, in, early, like, sixth grade, I remember my school, we had this, uh, you know, it was this heavier set uh, girl who was, like, kind of a tomboy. When we were 12, she played football with us. We were 12, though. And we know when we're young, women develop faster than men. We got to high school freshman year, and she was like, "Yeah, I can't, I yeah, can't do this no more." Exactly. I said, "I did." I mean, it. She said no, it, you so know, and she a tough so motherfucker, but it is what it yeah. is. Like, <laughs> it's common sense. The, 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 the fastest human in school in the sixth grade was a female, a black girl named Elaine Small. Fast as shit. She got a disease later in her knees and shit that fucked her up. She was one of the fastest girls in the country. She was competing in Hershey, Pennsylvania every year for the big track of me. You know, everyone the Hershey had the huge track and field events and the sprinting championship and all that. Mount Sack relays out here. She was one of the fastest girls in, 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 in the country. She smoked all of us at that age. And then eighth grade came around. She was the slowest in the class. Like, you know what I'm saying? Guy, biological uh, <laughs> science. 
took over. Yeah, and why, like, why, why, why are we at a point where we don't understand? Like, it's okay. Men are physically built different than women. I, 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 it ain't my fault. It ain't Matt's fault. It ain't JB fault. We, we didn't create men and women. We Like, this is just what it is. Like, we're just, I, I don't know. <laughs> and this is my thing. When is this issue going to, how does it still have this much traction? Who, other than Dwayne Wade, who, what male is supporting this? And I haven't heard one male support the, come to think of it, I haven't heard one female support the shit. I, Find well, me I, I have heard me. females. I, I haven't heard. I mean, maybe. Here's, maybe here's the issue I have. Not like have people like, like, in conversations I've had with females, I've never had one mother or one. Oh, female. yeah. Me either. Like, not in person. I think we should all just fucking yeah. play in the NFL together. Or the yeah, NFL yeah, together. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, like she just said, it's, it, it's, it's like, I'm not going to classify anybody as crazy or anything, but, she, but there is a crazy, uh, I guess we use it loosely. Yeah. There's a crazy aspect to all this and, and to us, to us, to us in the room. And, and, you know, we call it crazy. Maybe other people may call it mental illness, all this shit. I, listen, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But like even Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner now yeah. has come out on record and said, we should not be racing against women. And that was a fucking person on the Wheaties fucking box. Right. She's like, over there like, hey, y'all tripping. <laughs> hey, when Caitlyn Jenner say y'all tripping, come on now. Like, when when she, when when he, was she, them, him, whatever the fuck he is. Who say y'all tripping? You whenever, know. whenever he did it, he fucking did it. I was like, kudos to you, dog. Hold on. Kudos to you, homie. Because I, I used to pour out your fucking Wheaties when I was a kid. Maybe which pronoun said it, though? I don't I don't know shit about that, dog. I, I'm going to ask you, I, but did Bruce say it or did Caitlyn say it? <laughs> oh fuck! I don't know. Don't yeah. fuck with me. That's a hell of a poll question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Jamie, Jamie, say don't fuck with me. Like don't don't Dog. put me in that box. I don't know what. To do. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, <clears throat> oh man, say, I don't know. Said, I can't even think. We can talk about this forever. Thinkers <laughs> around here today. <laughs> we can talk about this forever, man. You can't cancel know. tonight. <laughs> Can we talk about something other than like dicks and cutting them off? Yeah, fuck. All, all right. right, top five asses of all time. Go. I'm just like, this way. Hey, Matt, let's talk, let's talk about some brass tacks here, okay? I want to get into something with you two that was next on our list. Smitty and I already started out with a banger talking about Caitlyn uh, Jenner. Uh, yeah, Caitlyn Clark. Caitlin Clark, sorry. The banger talking about Caitlin. Je- je- uh, uh, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Caitlin Clark and LeBron. Uh, uh-huh. We already had that debate. Well, look, we got to talk about No, the Lakers taking eight straight to the Nuggets, and I'm glad he got 40,000 points in an L. Take that motherfucking L on the way out. And we're your daddy right now. Daddy, daddy. That's the way that we are. The Nuggets are the Lakers' daddy. Good. Congratulations on 40,000. Hey, do you know that? Time out before we go in, y'all still got how many rings y'all got again? I can't remember. Well, we are the champions, and you no, are. But, 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 how, but how, uh, many, how many? How many rings you got again? Half. Just like the Big Lebowski, two thousand years of beautiful tradition from Moses to Sandy Koufax. You're goddamn right. You're living in the fucking past. The Nuggets are the present. Baby, this motherfucker got one of these. Yep. We got seventeen of them. Oh, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That's what losers do when they don't have anything to fall back on. Eight straight. Take that out. Y'all well, better win. Y'all better win back to back talking all that shit. Y'all better win back to back talking all that shit. I'll say you that. Will. Don't worry, they will. They're the best. All right, OKC. Okay, the, here's it. The, the here's Smitty. I every single record this guy's broken that everyone's so high on the goat talk with him, which I'm not. Of course, I'm not a guy. I I, I don't think he's even top fuck twenty. But anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, uh, let's. We already had this discussion. <laughs> Matt, but Matt. Matt, I'm going to be honest, though. Every single uh, record he's broke, he's lost a game of on that day. 30,000, 35,000, 40,000 um, assists. He's broke. He's lost on every single time. Every single time he's lost. No, no, hold on. Are you, are you saying that loosely or you're saying literally every single time he's broke a record, he's lost? Every single time he broke a record, he lost. Hey Matt, let's dive into some 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 football talk. Everyone can relate to in this chat. Uh, that's got a chicken. 
I mean, why, why, the, why the hate on LeBron? I, I know you, you brought it up, so I'm going to keep talking about it here for a second at least. You don't think he's top 20? Why the hate on him? No hate on him. I just don't think he's what he is. I think every, I think he is the GOAT at one thing, and Smitty and I agree, longevity. Michael Jordan played 15 years. If you imagine Michael Jordan playing six more years. <laughs> well, like, uh, okay, so I, 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 I do want to be clear, Matt. I just want to ask you this question, and you can give me your take, and we'll move on. He's is he the best dribbler you've ever seen? The best dribbler? Just I mean, answer these questions. He's dribbler. Not, he's no, not, he's not. not. No, he's just say Matt, just best. shout out when you know it. No, no. no, he's one of the he's the only probably six eight guy other than Jokic that I've seen run the point consistently. I mean Magic, Magic Johnson, you ever heard of that guy? Magic's not six nine. <laughs> Magic six ten, bro. Magic ain't six ten, dog. Oh my God, Matt! Magic I've seen Magic Johnson several times. Yeah, Magic yes, he is six ten, Matt. Six, Matt. I'm six, ten, Matt. I'm six, ten, Matt. Six, Magic Johnson ain't six fucking ten, dog. Matt, he's six ten, bro. Google it right now, actually. live on the show, Matt, and tell us what you read. Okay, hold oh, hold on, I'm getting there. Six he's, ten. I can't believe you didn't know this. He's six eight. Shut the fuck up. He's Magic six Johnson's ten. Six, eight. He ain't fucking six ten. Whatever. Who cares? They're both right, anyway, Let me ask you. He's yeah, not the best dribbler. Right. He's not the best rebounder. He's not the best defender. He's not the best clutch shooter. He's not the best free throw shooter. He's not the best winner. What is he to go at? Long jet. He was the goat, but he did. No, I'm just it. telling you what everyone's calling him. The he's the longevity goat. And it's probably because he does this. Stop. Well, we got to stop putting this out there. This shit ain't verified. We out here putting this lie out here. In the what's, what's, chill, what's, man. This? what's that mean? Like lotion? He puts lotion on, so he's the goat? Yeah, lotion. We'll call it lotion. Clear lotion. Uh, something. What happened with LeBron? Clear lotion. Nothing happened, man. It's this whole little... KG said a fucking... First of all, Kevin Garnett, who you met last year, you know Kevin Garnett talks shit. Yeah, I know. He talks loose. Like he just... Him and Paul Pierce having some like random like debate about like just the longevity and KG Lucy says something like, uh, Le- LeBron's putting on that, uh, what's it called? Norvac, I think. LeBron put on that, that Norvac, that, that, like that, it's like a steroid type of cream or some shit. He was saying it loosely, like in a joking way. JB, Whitlock, a few others took it like seriously. And now they're putting the narrative out there that, uh, LeBron's on. Steroids. Yeah, that's not, that's, that, that wasn't breaking news, Smitty. Come on. So, People have so been saying, saying this for a long time. LeBron's it's not just here. LeBron. It's a, everybody's on it. So there's a bunch of guys that are taking HGAs and steroids. Yeah, that's come on. Everybody's on it. We're not blaming. I'm not I'm not going to just. I don't care. I'm not going to say that's. I, I, I fuck with it. Smitty and I can say it loosely, Matt. I don't really care. I think everybody's on it. I think everybody's better to be on it. <laughs> I'd rather see home yeah. runs than fucking strikeouts. Oh, I'm, yeah. on it. I'm on it right now for being transparent. <laughs> Make your dick little. <laughs> Um, <laughs> even my shit went down. I'm still big. I'm, I'm my brother. My shit, my shit can lose a few, and I'm still good. <laughs> All right, Matt. Matt, I don't know where this show turns on every day, but listen, I'm the, dude, I, man. I the first thing I heard was transgender and dicks and Jenner and pounding them and all this other crazy shit. And now Schmitty's dick shrunk, but it's still huge. And pause. Fucking, that's. That's what you said, motherfucker. I'm just reiterating. But you're it's, it's still false. Yeah, if I can can't get away from what I heard. Hey, Matt. Some, some people just joined the show. They just clicked know. on. So as soon as they clicked on, the first What's thing they heard was what you said. So I'm giving you a pause to protect you. Hey, dog. You know, it's whatever. If it's y'all's show, I'm just going with it. So let's go. Uh, nah, it's y'all's show. It's our show. Uh, it's not about uh, me. It's about y'all's us. show. It's a, it, it ain't about me, Matt. Yeah, it's yeah. about us. Remember that. <laughs> All right, Matt. I'm going to dive into something real here, and let's get into something real quick here. And I did some research. I did a lot of work yesterday, unlike Smitty. I do prep work on the show. I don't so do I, don't do I want to dive into something. Fuck the NFL Combine, to me, in my opinion, and you know I'm going to already be the old guy on the porch, is a fucking mockery. Yes. So I just want to be clear. It's a joke. It's yeah. getting worse and worse. And uh, yet when someone breaks a 40-yard dash record, everyone calls this generation the best to fucking ever do it. Let's break down these so-called best to ever do it. All right. Yeah, I want to break this down real quick. Oh my goodness. You can't wait. I can't wait for Matt to hear these names. Super fast. I don't know if he's going to be a great receiver. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, none of them are. So <laughs> Darius Hayward Bay. Remember that fuck? 
Yeah, he's he ran a four three from Maryland. Uh, went to the Raiders. Fabian Washington, Nebraska. Oh, man, he, he ran a four two nine. Four two nine. He also went to the Raiders. Demarcus Van Dyke. Remember him, Miami. He ran a four two eight. I believe he also went to the Raiders. Raiders. <laughs> uh, Tyquan Thornton. Tyquan Thornton, Smitty. You know that name? I remember the name. All uh, right, he went to Baylor. He ran a four two nine. Yeah. Um, he ran a four two seven nine. JJ Nelson, Smitty. You remember that name? Nope. He went to UAB. He ran a four two seven eight. That's Smitty, you remember Jalen? Uh, M. Trick from Minnesota. We can't even say it, so nope. He went. To, he ran a four two seven seven. I do remember this name, Smitty and Matt. Jacoby Ford went to Clemson. He ran a four two seven seven six. I do. I know you all remember this name, Champ Bailey. He ran a four two seven seven five. Really fast. Henry Ruggs, Bama, ran a four two seven flat. Um, <laughs> hasn't ran anything since. Please uh, put this comment up here. Slow motherfuckers don't get to criticize speedsters. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Smitty, remember Stanford <laughs> route? That's my guy. Shout out to Stan Route, man. That's my guy. My OG. Hey, you slow motherfuckers. What are you criticizing? You know Stanford route, Smitty? That's my. I can get him on the show tomorrow. That's my guy. <laughs> what tool do you got in? Uh, liar. Oh, hold on. Liar. He don't I know. Swear he the guy, he played, no, no, no. He ran a 4 he 6. He played for the Raiders. He said, come on, speak for yourself all the time. I had him a Super Bowl last week. That's my, I can call him right now, put him on speaker. That's my guy. Hey, Matt. Yeah. It's his guy. He don't know what school he Stan went to. Had, Stan had the fastest 40 of all time at, at his time. Stop playing okay. with me, bro. He ran a 4 6 9 9. Remember Marquise Goodwin, Texas? Four, ran eight. a 4 2 6 9 8. Jerome Mathis, Hampton University, HBCU shout out. He ran a 4 2 6. Tyreek Woolen, I remember him, went to UTSA, ran a 4 2 2 6. Yeah, he made the Pro Bowl last year as a rookie. He's corner. He's a corner, right? Dree Archer, Kent State. Uh, DJ Turner, Michigan. I play against Dre Archer, fast in the motherfucker, boy. Archer is so fucking fast, dog. Yeah. That kid is uh, so fast. Rondell Mendez. Menendez. Menendez. Hey, Menendez. Shout, out, shout out to the Mac. Eastern Kentucky ran a 4-2-4. Chris Johnson. We know that name. He actually played. He ran a 4-2-4. No. Dylan Barnes, Baylor. He ran a 4-2-3. And then one of my – John Ross, one of my former Long Beach natives, Washington – Long Beach Jordan High School ran a 4-2-2, and then Ow. Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1 and broke Ow. John Ross's record. <laughs> Bottom line, how many of those names that I just mentioned that are relevant right now in playing that are good? Now, I mean, I don't know about right now. School, I don't maybe, know, but like, relevant all guys who actually had like real yeah. careers for real. A couple of Hall of Famers in that fucking group that you just threw. Champ out. Bailey is the only one I think. In there. I mean, look, I, I'm I. Chris Johnson had an okay career. I, I just want to know why. Johnson, no, Chris no, Chris Johnson, Johnson, Mr. 2K, bro. Mr. Chris Johnson was a bad yeah. boy. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, uh, we had, he had a great year, but let's be honest. When you talk about like running backs, you're not missing in him. So I just want to be honest. I know. And he had one good year. Like, how many? How many he, had one, he had one good year? Are you sure? Well, I mean, that's a year that pops out, right? Hey! We have the ability here to really minimalize greatness at times. And just like we get on each other pretty hardcore constantly about fucking maximizing greatness, we're like, this guy's great, this guy's great. We sure do minimalize greatness a lot, too. Matt, I'm so glad you're saying that, bro. Because I'm looked as like the I'm the happy, positive guy. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do about being positive. It's like... Sometimes it's okay to give somebody a, a fucking hand yeah, clap. There's, there's some bad motherfuckers out JB there. JB's gonna find bad. something every. You can and go. Look, you can go save ten yeah. people from a burning building. Why'd you do it so fucking slow? You know, why? Why you? Why you use the ladder? Why you just slide down the ladder instead of walking? <laughs> I'm like, look, God, this, this is the other thing is I I consider myself an extremely average player that wasn't very good and like had to change positions. So it's hard for me sometimes to sit here and fucking bag on greatness, dog. That's all I'm saying. Like, sometimes, sometimes, even though some of these guys are turds, there's some bad motherfuckers out there that did some shit that I ain't even thought about doing. And I, it's hard for me to just consistently just sit here and fucking, you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. I just, I don't think it's true. Hey, but I, when, here's my point, though. 
We see 40-yard dashes. We see a white dude from the G League come and win the dunk contest in NBA. We see a lot of <laughs> mediocrity that we call excellence now. I'm just being honest. I These 40-yard dashes mean nothing. Oh, wait, he these ran a never run. fucking can play. They can't play in the league. They don't <laughs> last. They're not very good. There's a handful of dudes on out of 30. Isn't worthy? Wasn't worthy a four or five star recruit? And like, really can fucking move? this kid can get it, right? Who the worthy kid? Oh, from in Texas, yeah. Like he, he's a fucking good player, dude. They he's got they good. got him as the fifteenth ranked wide receiver. Well, yep. Yeah. So that's, I'm just you're saying. probably going the second round then. At that point, those motherfuckers are flying off the board. So well, I'm, I'm just saying he's not ranked number one or two. He's like fifteen. Okay. Uh, uh, Antonio Brown went in the fifth round. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying he's not going to be good. What I'm saying is this list has 30 guys that ran four twos on it, and they're no, they're know. horrible. You better run four two these days in the NFL. These motherfuckers can fly, homie. I'm just saying they're hor- No, 15th ranked receiver, yeah, great team moves, not overall it. player. You it's fucking whatever. Idiot. 15th, you better be able to run in the NFL. The fucking 30th ranked motherfucker better run four three. The undrafted cat better run 4-3 if he wants to get on the field. But the issue is the stars get coaches fired, and you know that better than anybody. Stars get coaches fired. Five-star guys that I go after and recruit get me fired because they end up being nobodies and shitbirds, and they can't like hit away. You know what I like? You know what I saw? Show me the graphic of uh, Jay Cutler, uh, Bailey. Did you see this graphic? Never forget the time Jay Cutler volunteered to do the fucking bench at the NFL Combine, even though quarterbacks didn't have to do the event. He knocked out 23 reps at 225, which would have tied for second amongst tight ends that year. We don't lift. And we Jay don't. Cutler didn't do shit in the NFL. And, and that's my point. I want to. That's my point again. But I want to ask you guys he didn't this. Do shit. I mean, we can say that's that he was. That's loose. I'm sorry. That's loose. He underachieved. He underachieved. He underachieved. He underachieved. He underachieved. He underachieved. That's on me, man. That's on me. 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 Like, I hear this a lot with the media, too. I'm not going to listen to it from ex players. Come on. That's on me. That's on me. You're right. He underachieved. But maybe maybe he sucked or I didn't like the way he played. But to say he didn't do shit from a bunch of guys who didn't do shit, that's fucked stupid. It sounds makes sense. I feel what you're saying, but if that's the case, we can never criticize anybody no, that has any no, sort of level of greatness. We, we can't say shit about LeBron. We can't it's talk shit about Russell Wilson. Wilson. You've called people shitty on this show. It's too. How we so I, 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 so we gotta be careful. Uh, we can't. It's how we criticize them, gentlemen. It's how we criticize them, gentlemen. It's on a case by case basis. You right. You know you are right. That's on me. I fucked up. I gotta be careful with my words. He had a decent career, but he underachieved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skill set. He didn't live up the first round billing. He was kind of a fuck boy, but he had a great arm and whatever. There you go. Oh, he had a top five arm. He had a top five arm. Here's the thing about it, and I I agree with both of you saying, we talk about everybody on here, but here's the thing, like, these guys are one percenters. That's why I say Eli Manning gets zero credit for what I believe he deserves. Like, he's a fucking one. He's probably a 000.001 percenter. There's a bunch of guys out here who made it, to Matt's point, that we all played with or watched or whatever. And and all the fanboys out there in social media are like, oh he was shitty you you fucking are a nobody you're a nobody so like I that's my issue I have that's why that's why Matt and I argue about in my opinion I think you need to play to be the, the to get over the hump you don't have to play to be a you know good at something but I believe you have to play to get over the hump. I think you've had to have been a player to be the great one to figure out, okay, I know how the locker room manipulates and moves. I know the intricacies of a, of a finite detail locker room that's really, really, you know, got a lot of fucking intricate parts that move around. And I don't know that if I never played. I was a GA bookworm. There are those guys. We know we've talked oh, Mike Leach. We've talked, uh, you know, Char- Charlie Weiss. Fucking we've talked Todd Healy was the head coach of the Chiefs and played golf. Yeah, I mean, there's a few guys, but, the, the, you know, I just uh, that's an argument we've had. But I, I just want to ask you your thoughts on the on the combine overall because I, I here's my takeaway, watching a little bit of it. And I talked to Weddle. Weddle's going to come on today about it. And I just want your true opinions. Matt, you're a little older than Smitty, obviously, 10 years wise, uh, closer to my age. I want to ask you, as we've watched the combine over the years. What was that face, motherfucker? Oh, I look good. 
I look good. I'm in my prime, bitch. What? Have have the fucking bodies not changed? Oh yeah, the athletes are. They, they I mean, look, man, that Mims kid from Georgia looks like a fucking like a transformer. I mean, holy. Oh yeah, Jesus. so you're 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 on the good side of things. I'm just you're saying, on, you think they're better. I'm saying like they're these kids are pretty put together, bro. Yeah, like I'm not. I, I think they're worse. Well, of course you do. You fucking. Well, hate I, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm talking body. I'm talking body. I, okay. Uh, so ten years ago, ten years ago, eight years ago, whatever it was, I was at the combine with one of my guys, Sam Jones, who got drafted by the Broncos. I watched Orlando Brown Jr. pop his shirt off, and his titties hung to his ba- waistline. And I'm not talking shit. Everybody was there and saw it. I was standing next to Hank Fraley, who's the online coach for the Lions, who's my boy, and we were both like, "Oh my god." And he did like four reps on the bench and got up and ran a six flat. And so if I'm comparing him to Mims yesterday, then yeah, I think the bodies these days are a little bit better. I'm not trying to talk shit on the guy, but fuck, this guy's a transformer. I, I just look, we it goes back to this whole LeBron Mike conversation. Like, I wonder what Mike would have been like if he took care of himself the way LeBron did or does. At the same time, I wonder what guys. Like I think guys have the opportunity now in the information age, which is where we live. Ignorance is a choice. If you're out, you know, and you have pulled hamstrings or you're hurt and you can't compete, it's probably something you're doing. If you're not ready to compete at this at the combine these days and you're not physically, mentally put together and ready, you're dumb. Like all the information's out there for you to be successful. Like anybody that shows up unprepared for this and like Vontez Burfitts the fucking combine where he showed up fat and heavy and didn't run and failed the drug test. And was like, yo, smoking dope last night. Goes from a first rounder to undrafted. Still played his ass off in the NFL. Kind of a scumbag, but still played his ass off. Like It's just the combine is a huge job interview. And some guys take it seriously and some guys don't. And I, I really think it's kind of a joke. Like the, the, the offensive lineman running 40 yard dashes is hilarious to me. I'd rather see the 10 yard split like some real – explosive drills that like actually correlate to what we're going to be doing at the next level. Uh, but it's, this is what they do for testing. So when but Matt, people, I think four days, they'll get all that other work done. I think both of you will agree to this though. Like there's outliers. Like we know that guy's a freak. We saw Megatron before we saw DJ Metcalf come in and look like fucking Tarzan, but he's played like Jane to be honest, the most part. Um, Ooh. DJ Metcalf or whatever. DK. He's like Jane. DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is a fucking animal, bro. What are you talking about? He's he looks like How one. He like Jane. When when is he balling out like crazy? What? When is he balling out like crazy? DK How about Metcalf Thanksgiving this year? Did we watch the Thanksgiving game this year against the Cowboys? We had like that is, uh, again. We bring out one. We always like to bring out the outlier. One I, I, game DJ Metcalf just year. Show me a consistent year. He's a no show in nine of the fucking 16 games every year. No nine? show. Nine? No Bailey, no will you show. bring up this dude's fucking numbers from the when he started till now since D- DJ Metcalf now is pull up his numbers, a Bailey, game. for me. He's a Jane now, apparently. I'm See, I've watched the games, it's just like you do. Oh, rookie year, that. rookie year. 50. 58 receptions, 90 yards, seven touchdowns. That's rookie year. Next year, 83 catches, 1,303 yards, 10 touchdowns. Next year, 967 yards, 12 touchdowns. Uh, that's his third. Then he had 1,048 receiving yards, six touchdowns. In his last season, 1,114 reception yards, eight touchdowns. So I. Jane is a little bit of a reach, a little bit of a stretch. So where is he ranked at the top receivers in football? Well, we gotta. Well, we didn't prep for that, so we gotta bring that. Uh, no, you don't need to prep for it. I'm just asking both of you. You guys put DK Metcalf in your top ten, five receivers in football? He's right probably now. top ten. He's probably top ten. Right, like right now in the NFL, he's absolutely top ten in the NFL. He's top right ten. Now. He ain't top. Yeah. I don't think he's top five. He's top ten though. I mean, I'd have to sit down and look at the list, but he's definitely. Yeah. Like he's not better than Tyreek Hill. Hill. He's not better than Devontae Allen. He's not better than Jefferson, to Jamar Chase. Uh, you, probably, I probably put AJ Brown in front of him. He literally just said 
I need consistency, right? That's what you just said. That's what he said, right? Yeah, he did say that. And then you railed off the numbers, and they looked pretty or hurt. To me, it heard, I heard yeah. consistent numbers since day one with, with relatively inconsistent quarterback play from guys that are good but not far from great. Russell Wilson's not great. Geno Smith is a back, fucking backup until he got his opportunity. So, I don't know. Maybe it's quarterbacks holding DJ Metcalf back from being truly great because those numbers seem yeah. to be outstanding to me. So, so maybe, do you want you want to take the time to, to to take a step back, not apologize, but just kind of apologize? But you can record your comments a little bit or what? Yeah, where where's Tyler Lockett to you guys? Yeah, he's a really good possession. He's good. He ain't better than DK Metcalf. He's not better than DK. Then they're different type of players. And too. I like they, Tyler. I'll say this: they they complement each other great. Like DJ and Tyler are the kind of one two punch on your team. So we're like, going on numbers, if, right? If if Denver, if Sutton and Judy could play like Metcalf and lock it together in Denver for Russ, the way that those two played for Russ, I think that he'd throw 40 touchdowns again. And Tyler's job is easier because DK is getting doubled and all and they're scheming towards him. So that frees up thing for Tyler Lockett as well. So He's before you list all his stats, really you do understand that as well. But continue, JV. That's not all true, coach. Am I making that up? I'd say it's opposite. Yeah. I think DK Metcalf is just a big old freak of nature that yeah. I believe Tyler Lockett is by far the better receiver. So, so, so you're telling me D coordinators are going into to Seattle and they're saying, you know what, we're going to scheme towards Tyler Lockett. We're going, we're going one on one with DK. Let him, you know, for, for, we'll lock him up. We're going to scheme towards Lockett. Come on, JB, stop. Yeah, like because. And we're going to ask a former NFL safety that had to say guard both of them. We're, he's going to tell us. We're going to ask him right because, now. I would tell you right now, if you played the Rams, you had to worry about Isaac Bruce over Torrey Holt, the speedster, did you not? Because the route runner is a much more issue, bigger issue in consistent catching the football, getting first downs than the guy who drops more balls than he catches. Did you notice a trend real quick? As soon as DK got drafted, did you see how Lockett's stats shot up? Like, literally, you you look at Tyler Lockett's stats all the way up to 2019. Fight. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 2015, 664, 597, 555, 965. 2019, DK gets drafted. First thousand yard season ever. Thousand, thousand, thousand. You think it's by accident? Come on, JB. I do this shit, man. Like, what are we talking about? Hey, you do this shit. Then, then you, they have you pulled up a stat on a team that was shitty. They made the playoffs, dog. They lost in the divisional rounds. Those Those teams weren't shitty. I'm not saying they're shitty. I'm just saying as far as receiver shitty. core are shitty. The receiver core was shitty before Metcalf got there. No, but I, they, the, you mean the receiving core with Curse and Lockett that went to the Super Bowl? Those shitty receiving no. cores? With, yeah, with the great fucking defense and run game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true too. But I'm, they may not have been the best receiving core in the league, but they went to two Super Bowls in back-to-back years. Yeah, sure. no shit. I, I know that. I love it. No doubt about it. I'm not talking about that. Shitty. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this guy, Metcalf. Anyway, I don't know how we got on this Metcalf thing. We'll have to do a whole top five on the receivers, okay? Because Metcalf, Metcalf was a game, disagree. Right? I think Metcalf's fucking disappointment to you. Like I, That's how I look at him. I look at a huge freak of nature who's a disappointment. His biggest highlight is walking down motherfucker on a pick. <laughs> well, and it's one of the fucking coolest plays I've ever seen. I, I agree. I agree. Such and Peter, Doug. I like Doug Baldwin and fucking Curse and what's the name better? I think Baldwin's Shit. a hell of a player. Curse I, is a I, hell I don't of know. A Let's get to this it's question. Better than DJ Metcalf, Bill. No DK. way. Okay, y'all keep calling him DJ Metcalf. Is DK Metcalf? <laughs> All right. Let me ask you, Matt, before we uh. Take a commercial break. <laughs> I love y'all too, man. Y'all fucking crazy, man. Matt, NFL trade talks and re-signings. I want to go through these names and ask you where they belong and who you like and where they go. Detroit is looking to try to grab Sneed from Kansas City. Um, that would be a fucking huge, huge deal. Um, do you like that? And why the Chiefs can't make this happen? The Rams did it. Tampa Bay's done it. They've all been able to manipulate the cap. The cap just went up $30 million. Don't you think he's a huge must-keep? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a guy you want to keep on your roster after having so much success and winning Super Bowls. But 
if they do end up losing him and they don't want to pay the money, then I'm sure they'll be able to replace him. I mean, it's Snead is an unbelievably good player, but he's everybody's replaceable on that roster other than 15. And I and, and that even goes with Kelsey. If Kelsey's an incredible player, but they'll be able to find an, a, a pass catching tight end. It's not going to play at the same level as Travis, obviously. But eventually, Mahomes will feed him 80 balls a year, too. So it, I think that other than Mahomes there's and Andy, and even Andy's a stretch because Pat is so elite. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, I think everybody's replaceable on that roster except for 15. What about Chris Jones? It, he's an unbelievable talent that is a one percenter that is crazy good. But if they can't replace, if they can't pay him, then they'll have to let him walk and find another three technique. I mean, that's the only guy that you can't let walk. Can't is Pat. Everybody else could retire or leave. That's all I'm saying. No one's disrespecting everybody out here. They also have the McDuffie kid who is young, and I don't know if he's up for pay, but he's going to get paid here pretty soon if he hasn't already. You know, so that they've got you know some good linebackers. The 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 kid from Missouri, uh, the Nick, what's his name, Nick Bolton. That kid is a fucking animal. He's going to be up for contract here pretty soon. A lot of this is on Spags too. If Spags is going to look at coach and go, hey, we need to save our money for McDuffie or Bolton or Korlovskis or whoever else, or just overpay Chris Jones and make big man happy, and we don't have enough money for Sneed. That's what it is. So. This next guy I was going to mention uh, has signed since we started the show today. Mike Evans has re-upped with the Tampa Bay Bucks uh, two years. So that's breaking news. It broke earlier. Um, so that's off the table. Um, now Baker is a free agent. We'll see if he comes back or do they go after another QB in Tampa. So let's move on. Uh, uh, Kirk Cousins and Justin Fields both being rumored to go to Atlanta. Um We've been talking about this beating a dead horse with the Justin Fields uh, Chicago Bears. We can all have our own opinions and uh, assumptions. Where are you at with this? What do you think? Uh, Adam Schefter saying that most have heard from the combine that the Falcons are interested in Kirk Cousins and that the draft or the capital, I guess I, I should say, the market is not what people thought it would be for Justin Fields. Is that a shocker to you? Uh, no, I don't think it's true either. I think the market for Justin Fields is through the roof. And I think this is a planted story for somebody to either back off or, you know, offer more than they're supposed to. Like, this is the way that the, the, the game is played. It's manipulated through the media consistently. And that's a good thing, bro. Like, that this is the way it's done. So, I, I, look, whether it's Pittsburgh or... The Falcons, I mean, the Falcons would be so dumb not to do this. He's a hometown kid. You put him with Robinson. Imagine that zone read concept in the backfield. Maybe find a way to go out and get an elite receiver in this draft to pair him with them. They've already got Pitts, who's a, you know, under underutilized, extremely good piece that's a big receiver. I think could be super elite if they could just figure out a way to consistently get him the rock. I liked uh, uh, the head coach's name. Uh, Where? At Atlanta last year. What's his name? I'm drawing a blank. Arthur Smith? Arthur Smith. I liked Arthur Smith. I thought he was a pretty good coach. Um, you know, just Arthur Blank, the head coach, or the, the owner down there, doesn't have patience anymore. Since 28-3, to 3, his patience meter has fucking hit zero. So... Look, man, we'll see what happens down there. I like the high, I like the head coach they brought in. Raheem Morris is a dude. He's got a lot of a lot of people in the NFL that love him. Um, so Matt, I like Field real quick. In Atlanta. So you think it's through the roof for Justin? Uh, I don't know if I agree through the roof, but I, I want to just go through brass tacks. People who need a quarterback: Patriots, Falcons, Broncos. Depending on what happens by March seventeenth, they got to either. Pay Russ. Well, they're paying him regardless, so they got to pay him, or keep him, or they let him go, and he's going right. to go be a free agent and play for league minimum, basically. The Commanders, the Steelers, the Titans, the Giants, if they want to move away from Daniel Jones, the Raiders, if they're not happy with Aiden O'Connell, the Jets need a backup, and the Bears. So those are the basic fundamental teams that need a quarterback or could use one coming into this draft or into this twenty-four season. 
Patriots, Falcons, Broncos, out of those three, yes or no for Justin? I'd say the only one I'd say yes to is the Falcons. And the Patriots are just dumb. They won't do it. And I don't see the Broncos doing it either. I think the Broncos would have to trade for him, and they won't do that. If he was a free agent, that's something different. I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos just kind of stand pat, let Russ walk, run with Je- Je- you know, Stidham for a year and suck and see if they can get at the top of the draft next year to, to draft Shador Sanders number one or number two or number three. And that's what I said, and I'm going to keep saying it. I, and that's just how I feel about the situation. Is there is there a scenario, though, I, I want to ask you, there's, is there a scenario <laughs> that they don't pay Justin, right? Because he's going to get he, – if, if they do let him go, they don't have to pay him big money somewhere to sign him as, let's say, a starter. If a franchise don't come after Justin as the guy and pay mm-hmm. him, is there a scenario where you see him going to the Jets to be a backup and learn from Ju- from Aaron Rodgers, which I think would be a phenomenal fucking thing, but is it even feasible or is this so far gone out of my uh, am I out of my mind because I I don't know if the Patriots are going to pay a quarterback like him. I don't know if the Broncos are going to swap Russell for him. The Commanders, it makes zero sense to me getting Justin Fields because I think they'll just draft. Uh, the Steelers, to me, Justin, contrary to belief of, of Get Up and Dan Orlovsky and all these people, I don't think Justin Fields fits the Steelers team at all. I, I don't think Arthur really? Smith, I don't think Arthur Smith's the coordinator for Justin Smith or Justin Fields. I, I don't. I, I there He's more West Coast. He's more uh, half roll, boot naked. I, I don't see Justin. I think you have to change the offense for Justin and I have to be more Lamar-esque. And I don't think uh, that's going to happen in Pittsburgh. So I don't like that. The Titans, I just think you're starting over again. I don't think they have any weapons outside. I think you're getting rid of their running back. They're going to have to have a new running back. I don't know about that one. The Giants are just, to me, a start over. (laughs) They're a start over when Saquon leaves. Uh, Daniel Jones, I don't know what happens there. The Raiders... I like the trajectory, AP, and and, and, and right. everything's going there. But I like Aiden O'Connell personally with 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 uh, Adams. I like the the receiving core they got there. Uh, uh, to be honest, I love um, what's my what's my boy's name that uh, from New England that balled this year. Um, we, always, we forget his name every year. I, I, yeah, I, I, but I, I like the Raiders, and you still got the little white dude from Clemson. Um, I like the Raiders team, uh, our offense, and then the Jets. We were pretty loaded at receiver. Just couldn't see him last year with the Mormon Milf Hunter. And then Jacoby the Bears. Myers. Come on, Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, yeah. And then the Bears. So if he ball. stays with the Bears, you have zero outside weapons besides DJ Moore, who I think Matt and I agree. I think he's a real solid number two guy. I don't know if he's a true one. He's only a one out of necessity because they don't have a fucking two guy. So, like, where are what fits Justin? I think he could be a backup for a year. If Chicago moves on him, Matt, if Chicago moves on him. Well, yeah, look, a lot of it depends on where he goes, but a lot of these franchises aren't going to trade all this, you know, high profile draft picks and all this, all this like ammo for a guy to sit. They're not, not in the what have you done for me lately league. So unless he's walking into play immediately, I don't see him getting traded to be a backup somewhere. Now, also, I think that would stunt his progression, not help it. He's been playing. I think he's actually been doing pretty well on an upward trajectory of getting better, even though he does fuck up sometimes. It's a pretty hard position, as you know. So, personally, I think the more reps he can get, the better. And it may be a change of, you know, a change of venue for him. Get him in New England under Mayo, get him, you know, in Pittsburgh under Mike Tomlin and his tutelage. I think that Justin Fields could be a hell of a player, but going to the wrong place could also just destroy him. So this is a this is a big move for the young man, and he's I think he's handling it as well as he can. I mean, it, it's it's got to be shitty to be like married and married to the franchise, and then all they do is just scope other bitches. <laughs> You're just sitting there like, what's wrong with me? And I personally think that Justin Fields is as good of a talent as Caleb Williams. I, I like Caleb Williams, but there's just something about that cat. Maybe it's the nail polish and the dresses and the 
refusal to work out and like all hey, the. I'm gonna say this: that motherfucker is super cocky. He's super confident that he's gonna he's be the cocky. shit though. So you seen? You seen his interviews and like he just oh. he, like I mean, hey, if he balls out, I'm gonna shut up. But he oh, he better ball out. I'm gonna say that much. He walking around like he like his shit don't stink. No, he out. Hey, hey, but but to be honest, to be fair, let's keep it real on this show. He reminds me of what's happening where Matt is and who he just interviewed in Prime. If you're gonna talk the talk, don't ask, don't start none, won't be none mentality. Prime has that. Prime played it. He backed it up as a player. Now he has to do it as a coach. This kid is doing the same shit and hasn't done anything. And that's why I lose respect for guys. At least this guy's a top. I call Dion top two fucking player athlete ever. So he's on my list. As many and I just did. So playing wise, we know where Prime and Dion is. This guy is a guy who didn't play in his bowl game, and the guy that backed him up broke fucking records. So, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, but I'll say this though to his defense. Now, we knew about, we know about Prime, like now, like in hindsight, we watched his NFL career, we saw what but he we did. We know about him in college too, of course. But we know about Caleb in college; he's a Heisman Trophy winner too. So, I'm, mean, you know what I mean? So, it, it kind of goes both ways. Yeah, it's different position, but yeah, I get it. Um, so, let me ask you then. With this whole thing being said, um, before we get out of here with Matt, I got these 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 moves that can be made. I want to get to your wheelhouse, Matt. Um, Tyron Smith, a Marino Valley native, right here in in IE in California, um, is is gonna is gonna probably leave and move on. I got to ask you, who's his best fit? Who's the best quarterback for him to protect on the blind side? And then who's the best fit team wise? I, I've heard rumors that the Rams, the Chiefs, and Seattle are 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 all high suitors. Any of those teams c- come out at you? Uh I if I was the Chiefs, I would be throwing the fucking wheelhouse at Tyron Smith. 100 percent They've had problems at tackle for years. Last year was no better. I mean, the 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 two tackles last year are good players. I'm not going to sit here and say they were terrible. They won the Super Bowl with them. But they were definitely a, a point, you know, last year where everybody was like, if, we're, if there's a problem on the offense, it's the receivers can't catch the ball, and these two tackles are a liability. So I know he's had some injury stuff in his career, but he's so freakishly athletic and big and long and has all the experience you could want. And I guarantee you he's sick of losing. So you, you you put him on with Kansas City, and you're going to get a real motivated ass kicker, bro. I think that's a great, great, great fit. Now tell me if I'm crazy, Matt and Smitty, but I would give up a pick, a receiver, one of those running backs if I was in New York and a New York Jet. Yeah, they, they he would look good in, in green and white as well. Oh. They're in their unis. If I'm Aaron Rodgers and I want to make a power move, that's yeah. the guy I go make a power move for. Yeah, Fuck Devontae Adams and all this shit right now. I got enough weapons. You're the guy, Aaron Rodgers. You made shitty receivers in Green Bay great. You got them Scott co- contracts. Did these receivers? Go uh-huh. get those guys and go get a tackle to protect your ass. Bakhtiari well, is gone. Bakhtiari is going to be in Green Bay anymore. So yeah, if Bakhtiari is on the open market too, he'd look real good in green and white. As but well. he's that injury prone waiting to happen. Tyron Smith is an injury prone too. They both get hurt all the time. That's why Smith I wouldn't invest in either eight. one of them honestly that much because they get hurt too much. When they're healthy, they're amazing. They're amazing. And, when they're uh, healthy. Everybody gets hurt. I'm not going to sit here and really put a lot of. I'm not going to do something. They get hurt a lot, though, Matt. I, I'm not yeah, going to sure mean you like, like, I get it. But not having a tackle and then saying we're not going to take this guy because he might get hurt, I don't think like that. Like, it, if he gets hurt, that sucks. But, like, okay, Aaron Rodgers, we probably shouldn't play him this year because he tore his Achilles. He's hurt. Like, that just it sounds crazy to me. So, if Tyron Smith is healthy, he's a great player. If Bakhtiari is healthy – He's an elite left tackle and a great player. The longer you play, the more hurt you're going to get. It's what it is. Um, Matt, we got to get out of here and take commercial, but I got to ask you, Justin Jefferson, any shot in the world they trade him? Because there is a rumor out there. He wants big money, the biggest money, and they don't know what they're going to do at quarterback, a little less at receiver. Is there a way they even they think about trading him for a lot of uh, assets? I mean, they should, because if I was Justin Jefferson, I would just hold out. I don't want to play here. 
you guys are either going to bring in a rookie or not sign Kirk Cousins back, and it's going to be a rebuild, and I'm going to have two years of 60 catches and 800 yards, and people are going to start questioning if I can play. Now, now there's rumors play. Justin Fields is in the market in, in Minnesota. Well, if, if he, you know, still with Fields, if that happens, okay, I'm with that, but he's not Kirk Cousins from, the, from a perspective of facilitation of the football. So it's all, it's all fit. And again, Jefferson, I guarantee you, everybody wants to go team up with greatness, you know, instead of building where they're at. If Cousins stays in Minnesota, Jefferson should stay in Minnesota. But if, if Cousins doesn't, then Jefferson should probably do everything humanly possible to put himself first. No offense, love the Vikings. They drafted me, yada, yada, but I'm out. And, you know, I'm going to go somewhere that can actually help me win. Matt, hey. it's always a pleasure. We appreciate you joining Zero to 60 Pod every single day on YouTube right after this show ends live. Um, actually, today we'll be on at 12.15 uh, Mountain Time here with Coach Mike Sanford, who was just at the Combine. Uh, he can't come on at 10 like we were originally planning, but he'll be on at 12.15 to talk about all these quarterbacks. He's been at the combine for five days. Uh, so we'll be able to uh, elaborate on that. He just got back to me literally two minutes ago and told me that. So I'm glad we got to say it on the show. Remember, go on YouTube and check out Coach Prime's interview from last week. It was awesome. Uh, big shout out to Coach for, for all the access that he gave me and my team. And then, look, man, at some point we need to have a three a three man sit down here and maybe get wet on and Salisbury – and do a roundtable on these quarterbacks coming up next year, specifically Shador Sanders. I want to sit down and talk about what you see that I don't, what I see that you don't, and really dive head first into the evaluation of this young man because I think he's elite and special, and yeah. you don't. So there, there's there's something that we can get out of that in a positive way, in my opinion. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna uh, I'm gonna start doing coaches cues like you have Matt's monsters on Wednesday. I'm gonna do a coaches cue segment, and Smitty's gonna do a Smitty's a Smitty specialist segment where he's gonna talk about just special players in in general. Like um, so we're gonna have all that. So I'm gonna start doing the cue tomorrow. Sean and I are getting together and doing a show about uh, on the on the Super Bowl. We're gonna break down down and distance for three straight days. So we're gonna do that. So we'll get you on that too if you can. Um, all right, Matt, I appreciate you. We'll see you Wednesday for Matt's Monsters. And uh, oh, appreciate you. Peace. Have a good day. You too. Uh, Bailey, take us to a commercial. I got to take a piss. We'll be back on TikTok and everything else. Rihanna Smitty is in the news for ripping off a billionaire with a lazy performance at a wedding. Um, I got a little insight on that because my boy Pat Perez. I got a little insight. Can't wait to break that down. Plus some more. Don't miss it. We'll see you in five. I'm like, all right, all right. You got, I got the Herbies following me. Back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they appreciate, you, you know, in the world we live in today, there aren't a whole lot of people that are willing to just kind of say it like it is, you know, and, and you guys have created a, a platform where you're you're able to do that. That's what Pat has created as well for himself. So, uh, you know, kudos to you guys for, for figuring that out. Nah. I appreciate you coming on, man. Some people think you might be the busiest human on planet Earth, man. <laughs> no, you're, you're everywhere, man. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a crazy <laughs> fall. I thought I was a hustler and a grinder, man. <laughs> and I know everybody out there, man, that has a soft side or whatever they want to say. You're a dog guy like I am. Um, now you added the dog element to it. You, your, your followers had to have gone through the roof, probably on the female side. I don't know. You know, your, your wife probably looking at your shit like, hey, man, what's going on here? Females love dogs now. Hey, I got to ask you, man, what started that whole thing? You know, I think everything going on with Zach uh, this year, I, I, I've had dogs my whole life. My, my first dog uh, that I really, really had was a golden retriever. Um when I was in ninth or 10th grade and um, that, that dog I had till I was like 30. So mm -hmm. I, I just became a, a big golden retriever um, pet owner just because, you know, everybody gets into a certain breed or a certain kind of dog. And for me, I, having kids and things like that, they just kind of uh, became family members. And so I've had them for, you know, over, over 30 or 40 years now. And I've always done more than one. I see you have a couple yourself. I just think it's cool when they have a companion, you know, and so I think it helps them out and uh, it keeps them, you know, their spirit up. 
And so, yeah, I, I've always been a dog person. This year, I just decided to take Ben uh, out with me, not for the intention of social media or anything like that, but just kind of having my guy with me. And um, and I did it the first time out to Seattle uh, for Oregon, Washington. And um, these NFL stadiums on Thursday nights, it's funny, I took him uh, on a Thursday night with me because I do the whole week. I leave on Wednesday, I leave today, and then I'm gone uh, till Sunday. So I took him to Thursday and I brought him into our, our meeting, a big production meeting in this hotel. And Al Michaels was kind of not a bit, I could tell right away, he wasn't a, a big dog guy. And so Ben just kind of walks around. The, and when he got over to Al to say hi, Al was just kind of like, uh, so I, I kind of sensed that, but Al didn't say anything. So I went over and I got him, brought, brought Ben back over. And then after that, the next week, I was like, where's Ben? And I was like, I, I just thought, you didn't want him in the meeting. And he goes, Oh, are you kidding me? You need to go get him. So I went back up to the room, brought him down. And so from that point on, Al is more intrigued by Ben um, than anybody. And you know how dogs are, right? Like their personality, they just kind of get around people and, and kind of do it in their own way. So Al's come full circle on, uh, on hanging out with him. And, and so, yeah, I did it that first time. And I just realized how much he impacts everybody that he came in contact with. And just started bringing him uh, every single week from that point on. He's been out on the road with me now. I don't know, like maybe six six weeks or so. This is, by the way, if I'm not on the road, this is what he does right here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Mine are, I'm right now snoring, man. <laughs> That's what they do. It's yeah. unbelievable. Um, yeah. I, we, I, my good friend Pat Perez, live golfer. We uh we were at Craig's here in L.A. one night, and Al walked in, man, and we were talking. We were chopping it up, hanging out with Al. Uh, last summer, I want to say, or, or yeah. So right before the season started, I think last year. Um, so great dude, Matt. Yeah, oh yeah. I know it's probably been a hell of a experience uh, going from the college world to Al and that NFL legacy, calling the miracle and all those yeah. different like totally. legendary stuff. Has that been like a crazy, uh, surreal issue uh, moment? Yeah, or? yeah, to exactly right. I mean, yeah, I was maybe ten or eleven years old when I sat on my couch like everybody that was alive at that point and watched the United States, you know, in Soviet Union and all the way throughout his career. I'm a sports junkie like you guys. And so I've watched all his stuff, the Olympics, you know, uh, boxing, obviously NFL, MLB, everything he's done. And I mean, my, my career, I started with Mike Tirico when Mike was really young. And then I, I went to Brent Musburger, who was, you know, a guy that, again, our generation, we watched him too. And that was my next play-by-play -play guy. Then I went to Chris Fowler, who you know I've obviously had a relationship with doing game day. And then I worked uh, with Al Michaels. Those are the only four guys that I've ever worked with. Talking about bringing me in. You know, we bringing me in, too. This ain't no racist show. You bringing Big Smitty in with you, too. I figured you was late. Um. Ooh, I'm, I'm breathing hard. I'm over here. I was working out the whole break. Can you, explain, can you explain to all the white folks what CP time is? Color people time. It is, you know, whatever time, as 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 brothers and sisters say, add an extra 15 minutes on there, bare minimum, that we'll actually be there. So if we say 8.30, we mean 8.45. We say 9, we probably mean 9.30. Without, we say we, we, say we out front, we're not, we're, we're, we ain't left the house yet. Just shit like that. We got a... Uh, we got a great guest every Monday and Friday. Um, our main man, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in the house. The true sit-down crime pod. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. And I'm, I'm hearing rumors that he got his YouTube channel back. So the one and the only, Jeff Nadu. Join him in class. So, <laughs> Jeff, did you get your channel back? I did, yeah. I love how did that work out? Waited three months. I had to wait three months and I had to reapply for monetization and they approved it. But I, I had to wait for three. I, I actually created a whole nother channel, built it up, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of it and sell it. But um, really yeah back, yeah, back with the old channel. I just hit 70,000 subs. So three on the new hey. one? No, on the old one. Hey, on that new one, if you don't get no offers and you just bored or something, I, you know, I might just take it from you just for free. We'll talk about it later. Congrats, yeah. though, man. That's big. Thanks, man. Yeah, I needed it. it I built that Black channel up. It sucks. Black people shit. 
Black people shit, Jeff. He didn't even say it. He didn't have to say it. And it's black people shit. Just, he throws out free at the end, like just casually. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you know, if ain't nobody gonna buy it, me and Jeff, we go way back like four fucks on did. the Cadillac. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, maybe I, I have to put it in the running to get to get it to you. Jeff, we had a uh, Scarlett Johnson on. She's a grassroots activist. She came on talking about the boys and the girls, the birds and the bees. Um, we talked about these boys playing these girls in sports. And I know you hate it. I hate it. We all hate it. Um, and listen, do what you do. We don't care. I'm not a, I'm not a basher of any human or anything. But, like, leave the kids out of it. We got kid, We got dudes walking in Red Hills yesterday. Uh, I, I come from coaching era where you coach it or allow it. I think we've allowed it somewhere. Um, but is it not even more, I guess, when it's when there's when it's public figures doing some shit that maybe us three would probably say, ah, isn't this putting more eyes on it? Here's the final stop of the day. Two to one. Two to one. JB is fucking insane. Smitty. He, Smitty, he's no longer with well, you. Um, Smitty, that video. Oh, um, that ahead, video, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I, I mean that, well, I don't know what, the, what's the issue with that video. I guess, I, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of his. I think he can be a little irritating, but I don't know. I didn't mind that video. JB said, he's hilarious. My fuck is hilarious. <laughs> what's the issue with that video? Have you seen his stand? Have you seen him get out of that? Yeah, car? he does look kind of like, you know, maybe it's just how to get out of the car, kind of odd, but. And it's everything he does is reported. Yeah, pink, orange bag. I I don't know. A lot of shit. He was a a man's man at tight end, too. Yeah. Live access removed. Why was my live access removed on TikTok? Hateful speeds. You're gonna get it. Talk about demonetized. He's gonna get it. Right. JB was my what I say. What did I say? Oh, I have that I mean, all the time. When we've I we've been talking lot. about the LQB, we've been we've been talking about that stuff all damn show long. So, at some point, somebody they got heard the shit, and they did it. We talking about Red Hills, like you 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 know the game, JB. Why you act surprised every time? Yeah, you know the so game. Fun. Well, I'm not changing TikTok. So this, this is a super destructive thing we've allowed in this country to just pull people's access if you don't agree. What are we doing here? I, I mean, I it don't is get it, man. I don't Unless you're not atta- as long as you're not attacking people and threatening to really hurt them, this is not what is going. There is a rule in this country since it started: you have the ability to say what you want, and you will not be censored for it. Unless you're threatening to really do harm to somebody, what are we doing here? Well, we also in this country, you are right. We can say what we want, for the most part, we can do we can do a lot of what we want. But that doesn't mean that there's not consequences. Like I can go, somebody, somebody can walk walk up to you, Jeff, and call you a bitch. That don't mean you're not gonna punch them in their fucking face though, either. You know what I'm saying? Well, listen, I, I, I that's a good point you make. But I think in in the terms of the way he, whether he agrees or something or not, like why tonight you censor him? This has become right. way too normal. You know, it, it's really a shame. You know, and and this and I, Matt. All right, all right, Jeff, I don't even think that the the hump the rumbles or whatever they are, like we're on rumble now just to do it because we don't never know what's gonna happen. But but like even that is like pulling teeth, bro. I, I I've noticed even that there's nothing really true freedom of speech anymore. Twitter's not. Uh, I think even the one thing is, it's not. I, I get thing- like, fucking banned and I get shadow banned and all this stupid shit for saying anything. You can't say fuck, but you can. There's literally porn on Twitter. Nah, hey, yeah, it's okay. No, <laughs> <problem>. no. <laughs> no, I've seen it. I know it's a shame. I I've seen it too. So yeah, you know, I I don't I don't really know where, but but you have to realize this country is very sexualized now. That's accepted too, and we've just allowed it to happen. That's pervasive everywhere. That's also very destructive. Look at the people these young kids look up to. Look at somebody the, these women. It's shameful. You see some of these videos. I saw a video recently on TikTok of little ass kids. I'm talking three, four, five years old. They're dancing to these sickening songs you hear. And the parents are like, okay with it. Like, they're like taking videos. Oh, it's so funny. It's it's not funny. 
It's super weird and bizarre. All right, Matt. All right. God, why do I keep saying Matt? I'm looking at a thing about Matt. Um, Jeff, I got to ask you, we started the show off with a banger um, about with Matt about LeBron and Caitlin Clark. Where are you at with those two? Are they are they the goats? No, no. I, I've, I have this discussion all the time. I had it at the bar the other night. I have it with you guys. Listen, when it comes to Caitlin Clark, is she the greatest basketball player? I don't know that I can gauge that. I don't watch enough women's basketball to, to, to venture an opinion. I've seen some really good women's basketball players, but I don't watch it enough to know. As far as the NBA, no. LeBron James is not the best player ever. Uh, Michael Jordan will never be caught. And we need to look at more than just what they did on the court. Look, we all know what Michael did on the court, right? He was electric. But what did he do off the court? He built literally. He was one of the greatest, most recognizable brands on the planet. Everybody knows who Michael Jordan is. I'm not saying not everybody doesn't know who LeBron is. But through ends of the earth, you can go and they know who Michael Jordan is. That is something that adds to his greatness to me. But he also won a lot of fucking games. He won a lot of titles. I'll put Kobe also above LeBron, me personally. But listen, what he did on Saturday, I mean, what's he been in the league for? 22-ish years? I think 21. Yeah. I mean, 40,000 points is nothing to sneeze at. You have to ask yourself, and this is the age-old discussion, what would a Michael Jordan or a Kobe do in this NBA, right? It's all about – it's different eras and things. Will Chamberlain was had like – 48 games where he scored 60 or more points. Like, that's, that's – Kobe, Kobe had a 10, a 10, 50 straight in, in recent history. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't know, man. People – It was 550 straight. I think it was 1040s. Yeah, people don't understand what he his greatness was. I don't believe – it, here's a crazy stat um, that I didn't realize. Getting to hang out with my buddy Pat Perez, who's a Jordan golfer, and him and Jordan are tight, and they talk, and all of our birthdays around the same time. And I got to meet him one time at the golf course. You know this dude does zero marketing, zero commercials, zero anything. And you know he outsells LeBron shoes, Kobe shoes, Dwayne Wade shoes, and Ja Morant shoes to this day. And he has no marketing whatsoever. How do he doesn't we even need like how do we even quantify how big Jordan is? It's Jordan like don't need marketing. He used to market when he was playing, but Jordan is is, is just Jordan now. Like you don't even I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> I'm just saying there's a difference, dog. Like, like I I heard Danny Green tell me that when they were when Kobe and uh, when they were talking about this, you know, who's bigger, like as far as a global scale. LeBron could walk through China at one point and not get recognized. Kobe could not. And he said that was a difference, bro. He goes, now, I don't know about now. That was, you know, a few years back. But Kobe was like getting closer to Michael Jackson, Jordan. Those guys are on different scales, like as far as globally. LeBron never was until probably now because he's so big. He's like, you know, getting closer to The Rock, I think. The Rock is the same well, way he can go anywhere. The, the Jordan brand is as recognizable as Coca-Cola, McDonald's. Like, it's fucking vast. Uh, yeah. You know, he makes 250 a quarter on just what his uh, – just what his is owed to him from when he signed the contract way back. They made a movie about him. What yeah. his mom? What his what his mom made him do? Yeah. Two hundred fifty million a quarter yearly, per quarter for doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and look at all the. I mean, even I mean, it's more than even just sneakers. I mean, look at look at all the other. I mean, how many people have in their their dresser or their their closets? You know, Jordan T shirts. You know, tracks. You know, all. Jump I mean, it's, it's a whole new thing. Jump man's its own thing. Yeah. Um, and especially, I mean, it's really it's global, especially in the black community, though. Like, I'm gonna say, growing up, fucking like, if you had the Jordans, you were that dude. Like, it was like, God, I mean, people have gotten killed over them. Yeah. So, like, also, dude. too, look at the culture that has come from like a lot of these people that have sneakers, right? A lot of these players, they're more of just for basketball players. He made sneakers into a brand, like a like people fight over them. They sell them. They 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 wear them as fashion now, right? I mean, outside of the Air Force One, right? I mean, the Air Force One's probably the more most iconic shoe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But outside of that, I mean, no one look. I mean, there might be a few Lebrons that are that are legendary, but like Jordan has become a like a cultural, like the sneaker, the it's one. Not really. Not really. It's a phenomenon. Like the eleven is the most iconic Jordan of all time. The the Brett eleven, the the you know some of the 
the Concords, like those sneakers are, you wanted them as you alluded to Smitty. But even myself, I'm not, I mean, I'm a white guy. Yeah, no, it's right? bigger. Than, it's beyond black. That's why he makes so much money. But I'm just saying, yeah. I know it's specific. No, I guess it was like sure. fucking like, it was everybody like, wanted them, right? Yeah. I mean, the only other shoe that I owe other than Jordan's, I remember when I was a kid, Allen Iverson sneakers, you know, when he was at his height, you know, the zip up black and, and white. Reebok? Some of the Reebok? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the questions were the first, and then I still yeah, wear the ones, you know, like I what Iversons. I wear the David Robinsons. I had the David Robinsons way back. I've never had no Iversons, but I want some Iversons like today. Those are those are the Reebok. I would wear the Reebok set because I have a cool. pair of I have a pair of questions I, I would never wear. I'm actually I would love to try to get them signed at some point by him, but but yeah, those zip up ones, those I mean, as a young kid, I mean during his prime, those were everybody wanted them, you know. Yeah. Um, before we get into some brass tacks and talk tournament, we're still about a couple weeks away from selection Sunday. Uh, I got it. We got a real talk jaw jacking segment for you um, that we want to show you. My daughter comes to me and say, Daddy, my husband cheated on me. I'm going to say, Princess, is he a good provider? Yes. Does he take good care of you? Yes. Does he have a disrespect? He raises his hand to you? No. Outside of this cheating, is he what you need in a man? Yes, he is. Was this thing purely sexual? Was it a hit and miss? Or is he really feeling this woman? If she tells me this was a hit and miss, go have a conversation with him about his infidelity. Let him know you do not like it. I will never tell you not to leave a man because he cheated. You want to leave him because he cheated? Go ahead and do it. But I want to ask you a question. How many men you expect to find out there who are never going to go outside that marriage, at least occasionally, to experience another woman? I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's not realistic to leave a good man for an oops. I mean, somebody didn't agree. Uh, agree or disagree? Real talk, jaw jacking. Listen, as an old school dude, okay, I, I look at my life like it's 1978, even though I never lived through 1970. I try to pretend it is. He's not wrong. Most women will accept it because. Your husband's a provider, makes a lot of money for you. You know, especially with some of the people that I talk to on the regular, gumadas are big, right? A gumada is a side chick, and the wife accepts it because the man provides and makes a lot of money. To each their own, I would never tell another man how to live. But you're a married man, Smitty. Why don't you answer this? I don't think he wants to answer this. That motherfucker's drinking. He's going to drink the rest of the show. There's nothing even in that bottle. <laughs> There's not. It's air. But he has an unlimited source of whatever that is. I don't when know. When gets married, though, keep your fucking opinions to yourself. That's their business. Let them worry about it. That's how I feel. Is Mitty all right? Yeah, I'm good. There's nothing in that bottle. And I just refill. Hey, Jeff, I'll help out Smitty here. That's why I don't get married. That's why I won't get married. I just won't do it. I don't, I won't do it. I won't disrespect my wife because I'm a man and I want to short, fat, skinny, and tall mindset. I don't, I'm not going to do it. So I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I don't think Jeff, people aren't real anymore. They don't have the balls or the audacity or the strength. I call it the strength. To go in and say, hey, listen, it's over. I, I, I'm not going to cheat on you, but I'm going to go out and search up a new female because I'm done with this. Like, we don't do that no more. And that's the problem. They just will cheat and lie and then stay in a miserable relationship. Homie, don't be married then. I, I don't know. That is true. Now, you can't be out here just, you know, swinging and shit around and left and right everywhere and being and want to be married at the same time. Because, you know, women always come back and they say, okay, you men always say, it's just, it's just a man thing. It didn't mean anything to it. We just slept with him. It was physical. I don't even know her name. And I, and I, I it, uh, you, you are the one for me, blah, 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 blah. Women say, okay, well, what if I did, do the same thing? What if I go see what, with, with, you know, with Jeff Nadu? And, and to me, we're just having fun. It doesn't mean anything. I just, Go have you know have sex with them, but I come back to you. I take care of you at home. I make sure the kids take care of. I cook. I clean. I do all that. Is that acceptable? Every man I know gonna say hell no. So there is a double standard. I want to ask you guys real quick before we transition. Why it? Why why is there a double standard when it comes to, to this topic right here? Double standard on what side? 
on the sense that like good. men, I'm not saying men get a pass for stepping out, but it, it, it's almost like it's um more understanding when a man steps out versus if if a woman do it, she's a hoe, she's all this, that, and third. If a man do it, it's like he just being a man, you know. Well, I, I call it both way. I say there's men whores now. I'm one of them. Like, you know what I mean? There's a man whore out there. But listen, even when we say it like that, it, it, it's like we lie. Like, it's, it's, it's like yeah, a positive yeah, yeah. thing. It's like, it's not a negative see, thing. See, that's, that's what we don't understand. We don't want to agree to still. The, the, the feminists out there, and that's why we have these issues with these boys and playing girls sports. It's still a man's world. That's what we don't want to agree. Like, I don't think we understand. It's still a man's world. And that's the problem. I don't think we under, we want to agree. Like, we don't want to come out and just say it. Like, I think there's half the women would say it that are real women. And then the men would still say it. And then you have all these f- Fugazi fake fucks out here, made up humans, who are going to say, oh, well, the women's now are the, on the equal playing field. They make more money and blah, 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 blah. No, they don't. And it's not an even playing field. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. So let's just keep it honest and be honest about this whole thing. Like, it's not a it's not a woman's world. It's still a man's world, and that's why we get anointed Smitty as the goat when we have multiple women and women get called hoes. That just is what it is. Like I, I truly believe that. But I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna say this though, uh, Jeff. Like when it comes to this whole uh, anointing thing, I don't know if I agree, Smitty. Arizona, it's a felony if you cheat, and the women still get all the shit. So, like, I'm just going to be clear. Women get all the shit in 99% of the states in the union. So, I don't know if what you're saying is a double standard because the women, I would say, probably are banking on the man to cheat. So, I could take half your shit. Divorce divorce rules in this country are insane. Oh, it's all women-oriented, yeah. Listen, let 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 me break it fucking down here. Everything I've done... Every fucking dollar I made, I fucking made it. Some chick that I meet tomorrow and marry in a year, which ain't going to happen, but let's say it did, she didn't do fuck all for me. Why the fuck should she get half of it? That's what it is. How the fuck does that make sense? How does that make sense? That's what you know how many How many years you've been married? Or how, I, that's bullshit. That's why I would never marriage. I've said before on this show, it's a fucking scam. And I think today, like Smitty, I think is a, a, a case of he knew his wife since, as he said, for a very long time. That doesn't happen much anymore. But if you were like someone like myself or coach or any of us, marrying someone is a fucking scam. It just is. No, listen, I, I've always said too, like even like me and my wife, like when we joke, we're just talking about certain things. I'm like, listen, if for some reason like this didn't work out, I'm probably not getting married again. Not because it's a not because I had a bad experience, because I like, I put my I put my all into this. You know what I'm right. saying? So right. if this don't work, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I put my all into this, like this is this is the day one. And then for the same reason that you're saying now, Jeff is like. It's different when you're like already kind of established, you know, you're 30 something, you're 40 something years old, or if you're JB, you know, you're 65. And like now a woman comes to your life, it's kind of like, I don't know if I can trust them. I don't know. It's, just, it's hard. Like, Smitty, you have, um, you have a relationship. Like, I look at my own mom and dad, right? I mean, when my dad right. passed, my mom, they were together 40 years. You know, that, that doesn't happen anymore. People like yourself, that, that kind of relationship doesn't happen anymore. Well, there's women that come in here, like we just had our Scarlett Johnson on, and she's like, she has bigger balls than half the men in the world. That's the problem. That's the, and I said it. I was like, we got women out here with bigger balls. Like, that's the problem. And that, when that happens, Jeff, <laughs> you now have the people that supposedly have, uh, you know, vagina, not balls. Hey, Jeff, let's get into the brass tacks for E Dub comes in. Uh, I want to talk about this with you because, uh, Bailey, pull it up for the Houston uh, Houston men's basketball. Take a look at these Houston Cougars. We often talk about how teams, can you survive a bad offensive game in the tournament and win with your defense? How about can you survive a bad defensive game and win with your offense? Can you or not in this tournament is what I want to know. Um, I know you're high on Houston. All teams look like they struggled this past weekend. Um, a lot of teams going down or coming down to the buzzer. Um, where are you at with that statement? 
listen, Houston is the best all-around team in the country, right? And defensively, they've had lapses at times, but they're still extremely dynamic. They're extremely dominant. They defend you unlike any other team does in this country. They're going to send two people at you right at the fucking half-court line, and they're going to swarm you, and they're going to make it very difficult on you. They're going to turn you over. That is very hard to do essentially a day and a half after you played the first game, which is what the tournament's going to be like. I think they have a better offense than they've had every year that they've been relevant. Jamal Shedd, uh, the, the LJ Cryer, those kids, Cryer was a Baylor. He was a great player. You have him now there. They're deep, they're young, they're physical, uh, and they're elite defensively. There's not a lot of great teams in college basketball. I still think Purdue's right there as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that sentiment by Kellogg is correct. Um they, they can now compete offensively in every game, which they couldn't in the past. Yeah, I, that's that's a good, uh, good take. I It's going to be very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm curious about this tournament, and I'm trying to bet it as we speak um, because, Jeff, you and I know there may be another play in here for what we did in the football tournament with the same person. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about that off the Ooh, air. Uh, we missed that guy. So yeah. you got some money on the table. You're trying to lead a black man out of this thing, huh? No, you're just not. Uh, the first time. No, well, you're just it's a little. It's a little different. I, I get paid on this many. We all eat. Uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, Jeff, right now though, as we get into this thing, um, it's it's coming down to the wire. Uh, where are we at as far as your top oh, four? Is co- Arizona out or in? Couple things. I want to just quickly mention Kentucky. Okay. The, Kentucky is a major problem for book for a bookmaker, right? Vegas books. The whole world has bet Kentucky to win the NCAA tournament. I think I heard I saw like 40% of the future bets are on Kentucky. There's an extreme problem there if they win. They're going to really bury books if they win. That said, they cannot defend me, Smitty, Coach JB, and two listeners. This team is lost on defense. Very good offense. But you're going to get exposed, especially against a team. And I, I've talked about this. In the NCAA tournament, if you are good on offense and good on defense and can slow another team down to want to run, 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 Kentucky's going to have a problem if they get the wrong matchup. They can't defend, and they have to run to be successful. I just don't know if that's going to work long term. They're a team I think is kind of phony in the long term. As far as the top four teams, to me it would be, um, you know, obviously Houston, uh, Purdue. You're asking me about the top four one seeds, you, you say, Coach? Yeah, who you think yeah. are four, are ones, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say, to me, the one seeds are Purdue, UConn, Houston, and I would throw Arizona in the West. Um, I just think you look at the tail of what they've done. Now, Arizona's concerning because they've really struggled on the road. I can't bet them long-term. They'll win a game or two, but do I think they go to the Final Four? No, nah, I don't. Um, I, I just don't trust them on the road. Um, I will say, I think um, Tennessee's right there, too. If they run the table, let's say in the SEC, they could be a one seed possibly. Do you have South Carolina going further than Kentucky? Do I have South Carolina? Well, listen, I don't. I can't answer that just because I don't have the matchups. Here's what South Carolina needs to hope. They need to try to get to that five seed line because you would avoid the 6-11 matchup, which is going to be a really good bubble team like a Gonzaga. If South Carolina gets Gonzaga, I could see them losing the first game. It's all going to be about matchups. They need to try to get to that five seed because you would avoid the 6-11 matchup, which, again, remember, the 6-11 is going to be your Dayton game, which allows them kind of a game under their belt. Teams generally, there's one team that generally does well in that type of game. So that's the concern for South Carolina. they got to try to get to that five seed. Hey, uh, before you get out of here, we got E-Dub coming in. Uh, we appreciate Monday and Friday. Fridays, we're going to have our uh, notorious Nadu. Notorious um, Nadu. Hey, what do you think about uh, Bronny? Um, real quick, he's he said to, he's going to decide on a draft based on his the team's interest. I have a problem by saying this: if it was anyone on planet Earth other than LeBron's son, he would not be saying that, and he would have no shot. Why does this kid think again? He's a Caleb Williams syndrome. I think he believes that he's better than he is. Oh, he absolutely does. Wouldn't you? I mean, you're LeBron James' kid. You think you can do everything. I mean, look at how the kid is walking out of the, the, the stadium. He's got, you know, Secret Service agents next to him, it looks like. He's got like military men next to him. I mean, he is on a different level, and he believes that. 
Um, this is the issue, though, with, um, you know, putting false hope into people's heads. Um, I don't I don't see it with the kid. I've said that for a long time. I think if there's a, a James that's good, it's the, the second son, Bryce. I, I could see him long term. He's still pretty young. But I mean, listen, it's, it's not just what he did in college. It's just clear like he's being graded higher because he's LeBron's kid. That's it. Um, I don't see it. Um, I, you don't want to hear where I would put him in, in the NBA draft, but, uh, you know, that, that's just me. He'll get drafted. He's just not because NBA ready right now. I mean, we'll see, though. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe next year he balls out. Maybe next year, you know, maybe he's a late bloomer. I have no really? idea. He's There's not ready for NBA right now today. We, I think we all can look at that and say that. And and that's okay. For the most part, I haven't even heard. I don't want to know what Bronny's voice sounds like because Bronny does not really talk. It's, it's, it's his dad who's been, like, pushing him out there so much. And I'm, I'm on a fence with that because on one end, it's like you're, you're putting added pressure uh, and attention on your son, which, of course, when it, when it, when the attention comes on it, or comes to you, it's going to be both good and, and, and bad attention, right? But on the opposite side as a father, of course you want to brag and be excited about just your kid and your son too. So I'd also see that side. So I don't know. It's a tough situation. At the end of the day, Bronny's not bragging though. So I, I can't be mad at the kid. I just think we got to give him some time and we'll see. If you're hey, drafted, Jay, appreciate you coming on. Uh, congrats on getting your channel back, and I hope you sell the other one. I'll push it if you need me to. And then uh, we'll see you Friday for Notorious <laughs> Naidu. If you're if you're drafting LeBron James Jr., you're drafting him for LeBron James Sr. You're not drafting him because there I, I don't have him in I don't think he's worthy of being drafted personally. I don't have him in the top 60. Um, but real quick, uh, Jason Kelsey's going to retire today. I think it is a foregone conclusion. All you have to do is look at the fact of why is his older brother in Philadelphia or his younger brother in Philadelphia today? We know why. He ain't there if he's announcing the coming back. He's leaving. And that's a shame. What a great player. No doubt, Jeff. Uh, we appreciate yeah. you, and uh, we'll see you on uh, Friday. Sounds good. Have a good day. Right, Later. Um, next up, we got a man, a myth, a legend, uh, I.E. Inland Empire, SoCal legend, a Charger, a Ram, and a Raven, a Super Bowl winning Utah Ute legendary Hall of Famer. Bailey, show us who it is. Yeah, yeah. Ready to transform you in the I hate a storm, hell Mary's, I make it poor. Good, I ain't lying. You little giants, we been defying. Rice. What's the cost? Be the boss, breaking down the walls. We all lean once the coin gets tossed. Got the plan of action, never acting. No need to scramble to get traction. We make it happen. From three fours to four three, we get it cracking. Well, it's Eric Weddle went to Monday today again. What's up? What's up? What's up? How my guys doing? Hey, we missed you. Oh, we're like, where is he done been? He's living, he, he, he bounced on us, went to, like, you know, all over the world and shit. I was like, hey, all right. Living that good life, man. Living Didn't that take good me life. Didn't take my birthday, but it's cool. Um, <laughs> oh, you gonna throw that out there for <laughs> everybody? Wow. The hey, JB, everybody out hey, there. JB, up. one of those sly suckers, he always gonna spin it around to make it make it look good on him and look bad on everybody else. But hey, uh, just I so do remember you. someone yeah. skipping out of me in Vegas. I do remember saying, uh, I went to Palm Springs for your birthday when I had planned to come up and take you out, but you want to throw out your business in front of everybody. It's all good. It's all good. Hey, I got big shoulders, man. I've been blamed for a lot of losses in my career. Uh, I've been a part of some bad things. So, hey, I got big shoulders. I can put it on me. I can take it. Pressure is self-inflicted. It don't matter to me. I am who I am, and we roll with the punches, and, and we're going to be great doing it. So Dropping bars right here, Smitty. Dropping no, bars. You know, yeah, he's refreshed. He's rejuvenated, and, he, and he's waiting for whatever, man. I'm going to get straight to it then. Who's winning the Super Bowl in 2024, 2025? No, I'm just playing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, he does. Let me be clear. E-Dub tried to get me and get me and get me to take me out for my birthday, man. I much love to E-Dub. I, I was in Arizona with Pat. I was coming back. I was trying to get back in time. Pat, uh, E-Dub was leaving uh, close by, and we were trying to meet up, and it never could happen just timely. I couldn't get it out here, even though I was in the Beamer. I was rolling 120. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, 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 before we get in the show, another, I, I just want to add one thing on the whole Brian thing because I got in there late, but – when you're looking at Bronny, he's like, what, 6'3 ish, right? You, you, when you're looking at a guy that's 6'3, 
in the NBA. You, you got to look at h- h- comparable type players. Now, is he a Russell Westbrook, right? Like Russell Westbrook as a true freshman for UCLA dominated on the defensive end, did his thing offensively. He translated. He was long. He was explosive. He, that's that's who I would look at if if I'm an NBA guy. Like I'm not, but I, I know the game. I know, you know, I know watch the game. So is he that? If he's not, how is he going to survive in, in the big boy league? So I hope he does well. I don't know anything against him. But when you're talking about a first round pick, a top pick, there's, he's not close. And the reasons why is you look at comparable uh, athleticism, size, speed, weight, all this other stuff, how he will translate. I don't know if it's there at this moment. It could be. But usually if you're not coming out after your first year in college, it's – I don't know. Hey, don't let know. me ask you I'm guys. Moving on. Is he even a ball brother? No. You know, it's funny you said that. I, I was about to say that the, the guy that the, – the comp that comes to my mind, like the best version of Bronny that I could see would be him being like a Lonzo Ball type player where he's a 3 and D guy. But Lonzo was amazing in college, though. So that's the only thing. Was like, ah. Lonzo and LaMelo are 6'7", six, 6'6". Six, 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 hey. Like, yeah, and, can lock, and can lock up. Like, is six if you're six three? I think he's six three, right? I, am I? You know, I know. He's six four. He's yeah. I, I, I know uh, the other the other brother is like already six seven. So yeah, like yeah, like when high. Jeff's when Jeff says that, like it's true because he has a bigger ceiling. Like if you're six three ish, you better be a dominant scorer, or else you're gonna get ate up by the big guys. Like I, I just don't. I agree. No. Even I haven't in, watched him at all, though. I'm just saying in general. I haven't yeah. even watched him. I don't. I'm just saying when you watch NBA, if you're not a prolific scorer at six three, making mid ranges to three pointers like a, it's a layup, like you better be making those at a seventy percent clip, or you can't survive. You, uh, there's no need for you. Yeah, let's uh, let's get to a man sport. Um, <laughs> Flag football. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. Let's get to a man sport real quick. Uh, what's your take on Chris Mortensen passing away? Oh, man, that's tough. You know, Mort's been been in the game since I can remember. And, uh, you know, always I always enjoyed our time, you know, speaking one-on-one and, and his, his knowledge of the game, his passion for the game, and just his humility. Like, he never – I just felt like some guys are about the game, about the player, and some guys are about themselves in the sense when they ask you questions, when they, when they cover the game, when they – when they're uh, talking about it. And I just think Mort was a guy that loved the game, loved being around the game. And, you know, we lost a great one, unfortunately. No question. Sean Salisbury said the same thing, who used to work with him at ESPN. Um, all right, NFL transitioning. Um, the NFL is changing again. More is always better it's, when it comes to money. I think more is less. Addition by subtraction is a real thing. They're adding a game, Edub. Why is Roger doing it? What's the rationale besides just money, or is it just really just it's just money? It's it's always been about money, guys. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing is ever tailored to the actual uh, nuances of making the game better. They 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 classify it as oh, it's better for the players. It's better safety. It's better this. Better it's not. It's about what makes the money. It's what corporate sponsors want. And uh, we knew, we knew uh, after 2010 when we got locked out, they were fighting for it and we, we fed, fended it off then. But, you know, when the reality is, when you're in those negotiations for myself and trying to fight for lifetime health insurance instead of uh, a, a 1% added to the pie that, that gets delegated to, you know, 4,000, you know, 1,500 guys, you know, like take that money and give us lifetime health insurance. Cause that's, that's what guys really need. That's a, if you don't, if you don't get uh, vested after three years, like you're paying that out of pocket, you're paying it out of pocket anyways, after five years, once you retire, but you're not making the type of money that everyone thinks. So I was, that's what I was trying to, Tell the older guys at the time. I was a young buck, but is the I president got, gonna accept it? What's that? 
Are the play is the players union going to accept it? <clears throat> well, they'll 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 make them they'll make them somehow some way. They'll they'll just say, "Hey, we'll give you a week off in the off season or we're going to give less tackling, less padded practices that these guys think that are that's that's they, they don't think long long term. And unfortunately, the leadership isn't uh, what we needed it to be. If it was the case, we wouldn't have been at 17 games. We'd have better health care, et cetera, et cetera. And the game would be better off, but it's going in the wrong direction. It'll be 18 games. You don't go 17 games knowing you're not going to get to 18 games. Uh, exactly. You don't go 18 without going to fucking 20 in a couple years. Before yeah, you know, it's gonna be a twenty-five game NFL season. Man, here's insane. the thing, though. Don't push with the bullshit rules to me, though, and slap us in the face with 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 lies after lies. Safety and all that, right? Safety right. Not, and this and that. The same and thing and with the grass and the turf and yeah, the dude. games. The the reality, you know, when you're thinking about it, it, they could always turn it around and say, "Listen, the cap is two hundred fifty-five million." When when I first got in the league, I think it was like a hundred low hundreds, right? So at the end of the day, the owners can be like, look, I'm paying millions and millions and millions of dollars to players. You're going to do what I want you to do. And if you don't like it, I'll just find someone else to do it. So yeah, uh, auto leverage. Yeah. Like the guys are making exuberant amounts of money. They're going to be like, all right, whatever. Here's another game. I'm, I'm making 50 million a year. Like, so what? But, <laughs> 90% of the roster is it, and they're the ones that make your team. They're the ones that are on special teams. Those are ones of the role players that are now not having careers because those guys get washed out by the young college kids, and they don't keep the core guys of your roster. Let me ask you something. I know you personally, and I know, uh, but I do know you also think about stuff before you do it. Um, Braylon Edwards, I know you probably know Braylon. Braylon Edwards in the news. He came out and saved an 80-year-old um, after he was attacked by a 25-year-old in a YMCA locker room. Um, is this something that you, you would do? Or do you think about shit like this as a former player? Because I think former players have a microscope on them just as much as a current player if they do something that's going to warrant news uh, like this. Shout out to Braylon for helping an 80-year-old. No but do you think there's a lot of guys out there that would still do it? Or is it guys that are already done playing? I don't know if you see a lot of the same things happening with current <laughs> players as you would with former players. But then you also have a family to think about, E-Dub, and, and safety when you don't know what the 25-year-old has in his bag or in his body uh, that he can pull out on you. So it's a very – it sucks. It's a it's a crazy world right now. Shout out to Braylon for, for knowing uh, his environment and saving a man. But is it a risk, though? I mean, at, at the end of the day, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to lead young men and lead your family and you talk about uh, doing things the right way, respecting your elders, respecting your fellow man and woman, uh, if you see something that isn't right, how, how do you not? Uh, I, I, look, I, I think myself, I see a woman being treated that way or getting physically attacked, uh, you know, an old man. I'm going to go in there and help someone like and regardless of what happens, I'm not thinking about that. Now, where I'm at in today and understanding what I've built and how much I do have, I know for sure I'm not physically punching anybody. I will grab and tackle them and rustle them and make sure that they're not going to be able to take everything that I've worked so hard for. Uh, but I'm I'm not one of those to, to sit back when I see something bad going on. And, and I wish more people would. Uh, when they see these attacks and these nonsense going on like that, go stop videotaping and go help someone. Like I, I hate that shit. Very odd, very odd to me. But you know, on the other side, like I'm not gonna. It's a cruel, cruel world, and you could try. It. I've heard stories like I'm CPR certified, right? And if someone's, if someone is like, say, having a heart attack or losing consciousness, like if I go help them. I could then get sued because I'm not a doctor. It's crazy on site. So, and coaches have to be clear to do yes. it. 
Yes. Yeah, so that's it's crazy. It's so crazy, man. Uh, I could literally save the person, but if something else comp, comp uh, complications yes, happen yeah. from yeah. it, I could get sued because I'm not an actual doctor on site. So stuff like that, where I'm not a professional, like even though I know how to do CPR, I've been certified. Like I don't know in that situation. I I think I would, but. I could lose everything. You, you got to at least process. think about it, though. You know, yeah, you, it's wild. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It sucks. I mean, it's crazy. people that would do that. but All right, let's transition. Yeah. We got you for about 10 minutes or nine minutes. Let's talk about this real quick before we uh, end the show. Combine. Um, Matt, Smitty, and I all had a debate to start the show off. Um, we got these guys breaking 40-yard dashes. They're all shitty players. Um, let's be honest. Where are you at with the combine? I know Steve, Steve Kim, and I, we all talked about it. Um, he's saying, he's about- saying, Smitty, he's saying that because what 4 2 receiver has ever been good in the league? Like, no, that's, none. That's why he's zero. Saying. Well, receiver, I don't know, but Champ Bailey was fucking in the phenomenal Hall of Fame. Champ, Champ ran a what a 4 3? No, he didn't run no 4 2, but he ran a 4 3. Okay, but 4 3. Is different than four two because you don't get a limelight. A lot of people run four threes. Like that's known. Like if you, it, corners are, you should be running four threes. That if you're a top dude. Anyways, I, but I, go ahead. Yeah, man. I gotta ask you. Like watching the combine, if you did it all, if you even care, I don't care. But <laughs> I'm watching the body types, and Matt brought up the one Georgia lineman, and I'm like, yeah, we're always gonna have a DK Metcalf freak looking dude. But body types overall. Edub, to me, just seems like we have not ate a weight or picked up a weight in years, and it seems like everything, everyone's smaller, weaker. And I put it to the straight up fact: nine hundred NFL injuries, two years in a row, and the lack of rehab and coming back from those injuries show me that there's something missing. And listen. We can say how great these players are and uh, talent wise, but I, I don't see it, man. I'm seeing a weaker body, not a better, stronger one. Yeah, I. You can I, disagree. I, no, no, no. I don't. I, I, I agree, but it, it's it's never gonna be like it was. So it, to sit here and say, "Gosh, they need to be strong," like. You're not going to get the guys that are that are meatheads in the weight room that that lift and take care of their bodies in that retrospect. Like guys take their care of their bodies just in a different manner. Now they're doing yoga, doing you know plyometrics. I, they're yeah. worried about speed now. Speed kills. Linebackers are skinnier <laughs> now because of the rule changes. They got hey, what happened all the the speed back though, Smitty? The hey, game, Smitty, what, what happened when they're all out for hamstring pull though? JB? What happened when they're all hurt? We're hamstring pulls, though. All your fast guys. Next man up. Yeah. They're all yeah. out, man. They're yeah, all you know, small. JB, like, yeah. but, 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 but to, to, ah, to Weddle's point, are we going to just complain about the league for the rest of the fucking history of the league? <laughs> are we going to adapt our mindset uh, and understand yeah. that this is where it's at? Either watch it or don't. If it's that bad, then maybe next year, let, let, let's do a hockey show. Let's, let's make this shit all about hockey. <laughs> no, it's it, no, it, 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 it that bad. Smitty. No, it's it's like it's that? like this. It's like this. So it's but it's true. Smitty has a point, but JB has a point too as well. For the mere fact that you keep seeing these injuries, right? You keep seeing the the level of play, and you're not seeing guys play for 16 seasons. You can basketball, same thing. It's because you have to train and physically get your. You know this, Smitty. Like you were a meathead in the weight room, and you knew it translating in, in, into on the field. Now, for me, I lifted every day because I knew that I had to make sure my body was right. Now, when they started bringing in the masseuses and the the chiropractors and all those yoga people, I'm like, this is a bunch of nonsense. You're taken away from actual lifting. Like, if you were telling me that you were going to give ample time for both, I would say, cool. But you're taken away the actual grits and nuts of football, it was actually moving weight, which you could agree to this, Minnie. So that's that's where it's gone in the last 10 years. They're taking away less lifting and bringing in all this other nonsense that takes away from the lifting, which I don't I don't agree with. I think that's it's a direct 
correlation of why the injuries are happening, but that's the way it is. That they're they're tailoring the game and everything to what the players want instead of players want to be told what to do. And for me, like when you're thinking all the time on the field, like just tell me what to do workout wise. Like I want to go lift some weight. Just just guide me, lead me. But guys are rather instead of going through that, you know, physical pain and this and that, they'd rather just be like make it much easier and loosey goosey type and. There's no right answer, wrong answer. I see both sides, but it's it's that's where it's going, and it's not ever going to go back the other way. The fact is, though, we have an all-time high in injuries every year. The last three years have been an all-time high, and the rehab of those injuries are at an all-time low recovering. So, like, <laughs> something's, something's up. I don't know what, but, I mean, we can say what we want to say, but at the end of the day. I'll give you, I'll give you guys an example on, on that end. So, a guy gets injured. This isn't everywhere, so I've been on a a few places. Guy gets injured, whether it's a hamstring injury, a severe ankle, you know, maybe coming off. It's something where you're out a few weeks, but you're still going to come back in the season. Some places have the trainers get you back ready for practice. And some places have the actual strength coach who knows what they need to do to make sure they're ready to get ready for practice. Now, as two dramatically different areas, a trainer, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily know how to get a football player back to ready. ready. Who trains you all offseason? Your strength, strength coach. Strength coach. He puts you the running, the agilities, get your body right, strength, et cetera, et cetera. I've been part of where I would only go to the strength coach if I had an injury. I wouldn't go to the training staff. I'd go to the strength coach. What do I need to do to make sure I'm ready to go by – Friday for practice so Mm -hmm. that that becomes an issue in some places the trainers don't really know how to get you back for practice they get you out to practice and you get injured again instead of taking those proper steps that a right strength coach would do that's just my opinion that's what I've seen take it with you my thing is Smitty with your point to me it's like we keep taking away all these things and and we keep getting injured and I'm like well at what point are we going to say, all right, let's 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 get back to what we used to do. Like, let's maybe that's OK. Maybe weight's still OK. But, Smitty, I could t- I, I kind of cater to this. We took away fullbacks and big tight ends out of the game and we created more defensive ends and receiving tight ends. Like, that's really the game that we've come to see. Like, we got rid of the bang, bang. 200 pound linebackers now exist all across the NFL. That wasn't a thing back in the day. The safeties were 200 pounds. So, like, we've changed. The game has evolved. Like, to Smitty's point, the game has evolved clearly, but it's like, it's just not you. I'm not used to seeing this game played like this. I got, I, I, I'm used to seeing, you know, bang, bang. <laughs> we don't see it no more. It's more finesse and statistics. The stat going forward on fourth down, the data guys. Again, to the EDF point, yoga instead of bench, uh, you know, hot yoga, all that shit. Is, look where we are. I mean, I'm just saying, we got Mike McDaniel wearing capri pants. So, um, <laughs> well, I come down to uh, everything's full circle. <laughs> hey, EDF, real quick, I got to get your take on a few major moves that can go down. All right. Sure. Sneed, I, I, I'm curious on your take. I think you think he's pretty, probably pretty damn good. Uh, he may be leaving KC for Detroit or a couple other suitors, or they're going to try to tag him. Uh, is he a must-keep for the Super Bowl champs, or can they afford to lose him? Uh, they, they definitely can afford to lose him. <laughs> the mere fact that, you know, he was drafted four years ago and turned in. They, they do a great job of drafting. I wouldn't be surprised they tag him and trade him and get a couple picks for him. That's what they've done in the past. They've been a recycled uh, revolving door in the secondary in the sense that they, they just draft young guys, develop them, and and let them play, knowing who you have on the other side leading your team. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just hard when you got X amount of dollars, right, and you got to pay Patrick again soon. You got you to gotta replenish that offense. They're probably saving a lot of money for – getting more guys offensively, you can only pay, you can only have so many superstars when you're paying so much to them. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. 
Um, a lot of moves going down. I just want curious and get your take on a few. Um, the whole Justin Fields thing, of course, we've been talking about this for months and months and months, even during the season. They're saying that either Kirk Cousins is the number one choice in Atlanta and Justin Fields would be number two choice. They're saying the market, Matt believes it's a, it's all Fugazi and they're trying to do it on purpose to keep him. But people are trying to say that his market, uh, his his requests from other teams aren't that high. They're, they're not really interested in Justin Fields. Do you see him being moved and are they uh, are they going to – do you see him going home to Atlanta or staying or what? I think it's a foregone conclusion that he's leaving. I uh, don't know where – and you're probably not going to get you're not going to get a first round pick for him. Uh, I think like a, a second and a fifth or something like that. And I, I don't know the right team gets him and and does offensively that tailors to what he's really good at. Like you can win with him. If I'm if I'm a team that's not loaded, I'm not even thinking about Kirk Cousins, and I'm for sure not paying him fifty million a year. I'm not. I'm paying him thirty million max, and if you don't like it, then I'm gonna go with someone else. Because like I, Smitty, I don't know what you think, but like, would you? Uh, it's tough. Kirk Cousins, we know he was balling last year. He got hurt. He, he's a great pocket guy. He needs a Justin Jefferson, in my opinion. He needs a Addison. He needs those guys to to be out there on the edge. He goes to Atlanta. What, who does he have? He has a kid from SC. He's got the tight end who's under a You got a running game. Like he, 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 he'll, running be, he'll be good. He ain't leading you to the Super Bowl. So is it worth $40, 50000000 million for a yeah. couple years? Or, or do you years? take Justin Fields, who's young, who can do both? I don't know. I'm just torn on this whole thing because I don't know. Uh, listen, Justin is what he is, but I would just keep him in Chicago. They don't. It's not like Chicago – has a great wideout core, a running game, and a defense. Like they're okay on D. They got better, but they're not. They're not suited to to bring in another rookie quarterback. E Dub, like start all over again with a shitty roster again. Yeah, yeah. yeah wasn't wasn't the GM in Kansas City when they got uh, Patrick Mahomes? So yep. and, so, and uh, Trubisky deal and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's that looks like it's happening in. How many more? Can someone tell Caleb not to just talk to the media anymore for how many oh, these comments he be, he, he's be saying? Yeah. Like, like that, bro, that, I, I mean, have you – I don't know. I don't he know. That man – hey, I'll say this. He's one confident SOB. Like, he yeah, he better he better day one, game one. He, I need him to throw for 300, three touchdowns, no picks. <laughs> like, just off the bat. Because he, he's walking around like he, like he just – like, like he's already he, in he that conversation. He's he, he point, knows Smitty. for a fact he about to ball out. Yeah, like he does point, Smitty. We talk about his team and marketing and all this shit. They're failing him to me at a all time high right now. Like it, it, I don't know, man. It, it reminds me of some crazy shit. But it's just, I don't it's know. Just, it's just like it's arrogance. It's humility. It's, humility. Yeah, is on. It's it's like the game's gonna humble you and. It doesn't matter who you are. The game will humble you. And just as an older guy, I, I don't know. Like, you, you treat the game with so much love and admiration and respect. And you see these young guys coming in. And not all. I'm not saying all. I've been around some amazing young guys, rookies that I'm really close with. But you see this and you just like, it's it's the entitlement. It's the, I've been giving millions already where well, I came from nothing right and i had to do everything i can every day just to just to have a chance let alone have a job and you just like you, you just feel like you're taking it for granted and another guy would maybe in the same case would be real humble about it and just be grateful for this chance like i don't know we'll see how it ends up i just you wish you'd be more thankful of what position you're in a lot, I agree. billions of billions of people would wish to be in your position. Uh, why not just show some thankfulness of having this chance? I, don't know. I agree, man. As, as the like comment, I, said, I just think he's putting so much more added pressure on himself too, because he's gonna get overly criticized now. And I can't even feel sure. bad for you because you putting this on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if he goes out there, he's like average. We're gonna be like, oh, this guy's overrated. He shouldn't have got. You know what I'm saying? So he's yeah. setting himself up for failure. Now again, on the on the flip side, he goes out there and just balls out off the bat. 
Hey, I guess there's nothing I can really say. You know, I just I watch enough football to understand that, like you said, NFL will humble you. I don't care how great you are. <laughs> we, we saw Peyton Manning as a rookie go three and thirteen. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. even the all time all time struggled at some Drake point. one and fifteen. Yeah. Uh, Ed, before we get out of here, I uh, appreciate you jumping on in, in uh, the middle of this off season. I got to ask you, uh, St. Brown. I'm on St. Brown. I like him a lot. Local kid here, Compton kid. Um, he's trying to re up with the Lions. Twenty seven mil a year. Uh, Justin Jefferson, though, has been ta- talked about even being shopped for picks. Uh, that has to go hand in hand with the Kirk Cousins move, right? Like, there's no way they get rid of one or the other. They got to keep them together, right? Or one's going to leave and they're going to bring in a new, pretty big name QB, you would think, to go with Justin. I don't know, but that's a rumor out there. There's also the Ayuk thing. Brandon Ayuk to the Chiefs, I just heard. Uh, I've heard some other things that are possibilities. Uh, Can they keep them? But this is probably the year if you're going to move a receiver and not sign them or re-up them, you can probably afford to do so with the receiving class being pretty strong. So, And you can find these guys like Justin Jefferson and Chase and and Higgins, and these guys are just all over the place now, it seems like. Um, Where are you at with those moves, and where would you like to see an Ayuk if he does leave the Niners? Where would you like to see – uh, Tyron Smith leaving the leaving the Cowboys right now. That's another big one. Um, and Justin Jefferson says he wants to be the highest paid receiver of all time. Um, where are you at with these final guys moving uh, as we get closer to the 2024 season officially opening March 17th for for yeah. actual movement? Yeah, I'll be I'll be quick on these. Tyron Smith could have an impact as, uh, just like Andrew Whitworth did when he left Cincinnati, mm. went to the Rams. So so be on the lookout of a team that picks him up could get a good a contender, three, right? A contender. Yeah, 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 get a good 3-4 years out of him if he like if the his, Jets. If his mindset's there, uh Ayuk to the Chiefs would be incredible. And if I'm Ayuk, I'm saying, "Hell yeah, please." Uh and you get some picks for him. Uh, the Higgins, uh, I, I think, gosh, it's just so hard to give up picks when you could just draft a young kid and not pay him, you know? So I think Higgins may stay. Me too. Uh, and, Me too. and, and, uh, you know, Jeff Jefferson, listen, if I, I'm going to sit down with Jefferson and I'm like, look at this here. I'm going to give you 31 million a year, whatever you want. And you may have to suffer with a terrible quarterback because you can't have the best of all. I'm paying you to be the guy. I'm paying you to lead our team. And whoever our quarterback is, you're going to just have to deal with it. Now, if you're going to put up a fuss and not be a good soldier for me, then maybe this isn't the right. We're going to trade you. Like, just be honest with these guys because you can't have the best of both worlds, right? I, I can't pay Kirk Cousins 50 off of an AC or injury, and then I'm going to come back and pay you, which you deserve. I want you. You are our franchise. But just work with me here. Work with me. Receivers are very delicate to deal with. So I would just make sure I'm, I'm good with all that. But he deserves it. He's un- incredible. But listen, when, you, when you're getting paid the top of the, uh, the market for your position, you're the guy, and you're expected to play – at a high level, regardless of who your teammates are. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, E-Dub, man, I appreciate you jumping on. Wedle wisdom. Oh, I wait, missed baby. you, Wedle, man. I'm glad to see you doing good, man. Hey, E-Dub, I got to come down there this week, maybe. I'm around. I'm uh, at the high school. We're here. I'm actually in Palm Springs this weekend for my son's tournament. So uh, I, I, we could definitely link up this weekend uh, if you don't come down. All right, definitely. JP, right. let's pull up to San Diego late late this month, man. Me and you, I'm going to bring some homies. We'll, we'll make some sandwiches to bring on the road, some chips, some lunchable, <laughs> and we'll pull up, man. Okay, come on down, man. I got a spot. I got a little casita. We can hang out. Got the theater. We can, we can have a – So JB can barbecue. I got plenty of barbecue stuff. So we can do let's, it all. Let's get Smitty out the hood. Let's get Smitty out the hood. March 26th weekend, we'll set it up. We'll get some bratwurst on the grill. Yes. We'll make it happen. Let's do it. See you guys. All right, up. Bratwurst is very – White of you. <laughs> nah, it's a Midwest thing. Y'all ain't got nah, brats out here. Uh, uh, on the, on the, it's a fucking Y'all eat horrific. chicken links and hot links out here. It's we eat brats. It's a horrific thing. Uh, it's a Midwest. What? White people. White people. Midwest there shit. There ain't no white people shit. Yeah, we brothers. I grew up on bratwurst with, with mustard down the, the hood. Fucking crazy. We eat bratwurst. 
Black people eat brat. How you gonna tell a brother what a brother gonna eat? We grew up in the hood eating bratwurst. Not we, no, in, we do a do a poll right now on Twitter. Do, do black right people now. eat bratwurst in the Midwest? We do bratwurst with mustard down the middle, white bread folded down, or barbecue sauce if you want it. Fuck you talking about? <laughs> Naptown. Found that like button, man. Subscribe, become a member. But I, I never seen it. Uh, N- Naptown must be a whole nother hood. <laughs> we, we, we from the listen. Come hey, to Indy. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you off the post road. road. You from the your hood is like just fucking country. Like, see, there's there's hoods out there like Louisiana, go down in Houston. There's some country ass backwoods hoods. Georgia got some. That's what Indianapolis is, dog. It's different from big city hood. Like, let's just keep it real. It is completely different in the con. We're the concrete jungle. Y'all are just in the jungle. <laughs> it's like forest, trees, dirt road. Like yeah, it's right. completely different. It's country hood. Our shit is more hood than y'all shit. We got potholes, horrible weather. Shit is it, dark. You you fly to Indy right now. It's fucking dark. There's no sun. Trees yeah, cut down. Cool. Leaves all over the fucking. It's ain't no cool. leaves on the tree. Potholes everywhere. That's why. Is off. It's I, a I, I'm, I'm looking at my window right now, JB. It's fucking beautiful in LA. Uh, it's the beautiful. It's blue, not a cloud in sight. This Palm is trees the LA everywhere. I'm signed up for right today. The sunny, beautiful. I, I, I'm gonna go outside. I don't know what I'm gonna do today, Smitty. I'm gonna do something. No, I, listen. I agree. I love LA. That's why I move here. I'm saying really LA not. LA right. ain't fucking gangster. It ain't hood out here. You hey. people move to LA for a better life. Oh, no, no. This is happening here in Northern California right now. They had 15 feet of snow last night on Donner Pass in Northern California. 15 feet of snow. This is a regular, this is a regular day in the office for me. This is some regular shit to No, me. that ain't. You don't get 15 feet of snow in Indianapolis. I've got this before. Yes, I have. Stop. Stop. I've been snowed in like Your house ain't just never like looked this. like that. All right, JB. So I, he gonna tell me what weather I didn't been through. My point is we move to LA for better lives. <laughs> your hood, we That's- move here to your hood to have a better life. <laughs> Wait, there was 190 mile an hour winds last night here. That is kind of that's kind of crazy. That's sure. That's hurricane tornado winds. That is pretty wild. So you, you don't got that in nap time. You got potholes and trees and shit. You know what I mean? You got like, to be honest, your hood is really what like trailer park white trash is. That's their hood. Same hood. Same hood. We got concrete jungle, Smitty. This is a difference. Come to Indy with me. I'm going to drop you off at 42nd and Post Road. And I'm going to come back and get you in three hours. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how you how you make it. And we'll, and we'll go from I'll there. I'll make it just fine. Come on, dog. I'm from the most gang banged out city in American's history. Stop. All that shit just in the movies and shit. That shit not real. That shit. That shit. That shit, that shit is blown up in the movies. You came now. See, you couldn't have came. That shit blown up in the movies. You couldn't have came in the eighties. JB, you that's the nap town. You know, you know where I live at right now. I ain't gonna say it out loud, but you know where I live at. I'm, yeah, I'm in like, it. I'm in it. I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking comfortable like as hell. City. That's come. Mo, Mo's from there. Mo's from there in the chat and played with me. That's come on, man. It's cupcakes. I'm uh, in it. Like, what the fuck you talking about? It's cupcakes. <laughs> Hey, hey, Bailey, let's, let's, Smitty, any last words before we get back tomorrow for a hey, talk? Man, make sure y'all follow my Instagram, man. I dropped some real inspirational uh, messages late last night, early this morning, man. You know, messages come in different forms, different formats. I was putting together a chair last night, something that I never do. I'm not a handyman uh, at all. I that cringe vibe, dog. I'm putting the chair together, y'all, and I, I struggled a little bit with the first chair. But when I got to the second chair, it was much easier because I went through those struggles with the first chair, what am I saying, Darnell? What are you saying, Darnell? I'm saying this. You can't avoid the struggles. You have to go through the struggles in order to learn and in order to grow. So whatever you're going through right now, it might look so bad right, right now in front of you. It might look like you can't get through it. Keep on going. Keep your head down. Keep walking forward because those struggles that you're going through today will prepare you better for tomorrow. That's right, D. Jones, a chair. There's a message in everything you do and everything happens for a reason. So my message to you guys today is go get it. If you fall down, get up, brush yourself off, and get back at it again. This is the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty Man Live. We'll be back here tomorrow. Big time guest, special guest. 
new segments. And I think Coach JB's little brother, Ja Brown, is going to pull up as well, man. So make sure y'all here to see him. And we're going to be back soon. I might go hit the gym, get my shoulder right, get my chest right. I'm losing 10 pounds this week. But to turn up, y'all. I love y'all, man. I'm out. Looks like I put a chair together. God damn. Can't change the oil yet, though. Baby, take us away. We'll see you press so passage, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a rap. We were